Well, good afternoon, baseball fans. This is George Bryson with Bob Neal, welcoming you to the Cleveland Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, and the 1963 All-Star Baseball Game. We're up to you by Gillette, maker of the Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor and remarkable Super Blue Blades. Extra rich, foamy instant lather. Convenient right yard power spray deodorant. And new sun up aftershave for that top of the morning feeling. And by the Chrysler Corporation, makers of Plymouth, Valiant, Chrysler, Imperial, Dodge, Dodge Dart, and Dodge Trucks. All with the first and only five year or 50,000 mile warranty. Gillette Safety Razor Company and the Chrysler Corporation will also bring you exclusively on NBC the World Series, the annual blue and gray football game, and the 1964 Rose Bowl game. This program is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball, solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, reproduction, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the commissioner. Well, baseball fans, here we are in the city of Cleveland. The 34th All-Star Game, and it marks the third time that this classic between the stars of the American League and the National League have visited the shores of Lake Erie. It's a beautiful day, white clouds floating, a blue sky we can see, the temperature just right, a fine day for a ball game. It's appropriate, I think, that Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, which the Indians have established most of the attendance records of the major leagues, also owns the crowd record for this Midsummer Classic, which dates back to 1933. It was on July the 8th in 1935, and almost 70,000 set in this uh, ballpark. Watch the American Leaguers defeat the National Leaguers 4-1. Crowd figure still stands as a record for the event. And 19 years later, on July the 14th, 1954, the All-Star Game returned to Cleveland Stadium and the second biggest gathering in the history of the event, 68,751, saw the American League outlast the National League 11 to 9. And here we are once again now, the new stars of the game, new names for the most part, but the same great game of baseball. There have been 33 games between the two leagues, American League holds the edge, 17 to 15. One game ended in a tie. Some of the great names have played in these All-Star games, and I think a fitting start to the series. Dramatic All-Star games, individual deeds through the years. Initial contest was featured by a two-run home run off the bat of Babe Ruth. First of many notable blows that have been hit in these games. American League defeated the National League four to two, and Lefty Gomez received credit for the victory. Bill Hallahan being charged with the defeat. Now, both the games played here in Cleveland Stadium rate for the most exciting ones of the series. And the first one, Gomez and the Indians' Mal Harder combined to toss the nifty four-hitter in pitching their mates to a 4-1 to victory over the National League. More great names. Jimmy Fox. There's a Fox in the ball game today. But the double X was a different one. Big, strong hitter. And he had a two-run homer in the first half of the first inning. The, rather, the last half of the first inning to send the American League off to an early lead. Later, he accounted for a third run with a single. Names like Archie Vaughn, Bill Terry, Gomez, Joe Vosmick, Babe Ruth, Carl Hubble, Jimmy Fox, Joe DiMaggio, Ted Williams, Bobby Doerr, Stan Musial, Red Chandis, Ina Slaughter, Manny Minoso, Whitey Ford, Willie Mays, and just a few who have been outstanding in these ball games. And I suppose, too, there's a bit of difference that you can find in this one as compared to the World Series. The World Series pits the two winning teams. Here... It's kind of a dream, really, because a dream fulfilled because you see the greats as selected by the teammates themselves who will play in this ball game. Now let's take a quick look at the starting lineups. These have been selected by the ball clubs, the ball players themselves. That have Tommy Davis will lead off of the Dodgers. He'll be in left field. Hank Aaron of the Braves will be in right field hitting second. Batting third at first base will be Bill White. The squads we're going to be introduced right now, and we'll go along with what we're doing here, and they'll come to two or three names that I'm certain that you'll uh, hear a tremendous ovation. Alvin Dark has just been greeted. Batting fourth for the National League will be the center fielder, Willie Mays. Ed Bailey of the Giants is the catcher. He'll be batting fifth. 
Kenny Boyer of the Cardinals at third base, hitting sixth in the order. Dick Grode, also of the Cardinals, at shortstop, hitting seventh. Julian Javier will be at second base. He, too, with the St. Louis Cardinals. And the pitcher from the Cincinnati Reds will be Jim O'Toole, the left-hander. Looking now at the American League, they'll lead off with Nelson Fox of the Chicago White Sox at second base. Batting second in center field, his first year. First all-star game, Albie Pearson. Batting third, the right fielder, Al Kaline of the Tigers. Frank Malzone will be batting fourth. He's the third baseman. Leon Wagner of the Angels in left field, hitting fifth. Of the Minnesota Twins, their great catcher, Earl Batty, will hit sixth. And the Yankees' sensational first baseman, playing in his first All-Star game, Joe Pepitone, will hit seventh. And Zoilo Versalas in his first will be at shortstop, a nifty man with a glove. And Ken McBride... A right-hander, but very similar to O'Toole in equipment, personality, and so forth, will do the pitching. Ken McBride, by the way, has been a very good pitcher, though he's been in two previous All-Star assignments last year. He could not appear because of a broken rib. First year, did not get into the ball game. This year will be the starting pitcher. He's been selected... Well, it's pretty tough, you know, for Gene Mock to pick out a man to start a ball game with all the talent lined up here. McBride, Mambuquet, Pizarro, Raditz, Brandt, Boughton, Bunning, such names as that. And McBride has had a fine June. He has not lost a ball game since the last week in May, and he's won six in June. He's a right-hander. Now, Jim O'Toole... The young fellow who was born and raised in Chicago, the son of a policeman there. And Jim O'Toole and the Cincinnati organization has come a long, long way. They laughed a little bit, I think, when it was learned that he put T-H-I-N-K in letters on the fingers of his glove. But he's done that, and he's now become one of the great pitchers of the game. McBride was born in Huntsville, Alabama. He now lives here in Cleveland. Warren Spahn is coming out now. 14 all-star appearances for him. And now for the 20th year. Listen to this one. All-star team from the St. Louis Cardinals, outfielder Stan Stan the man. And now, the starting lineup. He'll be now giving the starting lineups. And playing left field from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Introducing uh, Tommy Davis right at the moment. We've already given you the lineup. We'll give you something about some of these fellows as they come out now. Hank Aaron has been introduced. There has been a slight change in the uh, batting order, but we have it correctly now, I think. But right now, good pleasure. I'd like to tell you this that the All Star Baseball game is being brought to you from Cleveland Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Now, you know Bob Neal, a really great player, kind out on this field today, are the fellows who keep working out. They're never satisfied completely with their performance. Well, you said it, George, and that's one reason Gillette has always been the standout in shaving products. They're always pushing ahead with research and manufacturing improvements. Gillette's newest product is cool, refreshing sun-up aftershave. Right now, you can get it free with the purchase of the 150 Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor Set. Sun Up gives you the top of the morning feeling, a wonderful sense of well being that lasts, and its crisp masculine fragrance makes a hit with the ladies, too. The Slim Adjustable Razor has Gillette's exclusive precision dial with nine different blade settings. One is exactly right for you, no matter what your combination of skin and beard. Fans tried Gillette's new Sun Up Aftershave free with the Slim Adjustable Razor set at $1.50 plus tax. Or get it free with Gillette Super Blue Blade 15s at a dollar plus tax. Well, George, the spectacular moments of the All Star game are here today, and you're sure capturing them for us. Well, I'll tell you, I don't think there's a greater thrill in the world that you can have than the one you get when you see a ball game start. The first game of a season, the last game of a season, the All Star game, the World Series. And looking down there now, as the National League is lined up between home plate and third base, money, all the money in the world could not buy that talent that's there. Those 25 ball players, 
managers and coaches. And the same thing will go on the American League side. And I think it's interesting to note, Bob, that uh, <laughs> the Yankee manager, who is the manager of the American League, has been introduced to this Cleveland crowd. Taking a look at the other personnel on the ball club, Sam Mealy of the Twins and Johnny Pesky of the Red Sox, both successful managers, will be the coaches. Of course, Ralph Hauk, the manager of the Yankees, is the manager of this ball club. Alvin Dark runs the National League club. Gene Mock of the Phillies, last year's National League Manager of the Year, will coach at third base. And Bob Kennedy of the Chicago Cubs will be working at first base. Now, the umpires are a little different than most of us around the league get a chance to see. Hank Soar of the American League will work back of the plate. Bill Zhukowski of the National League at first base. At second base will be Al Smith of the American League. Paul Pryor will work at third. He's of the National League. Now, the difference is that we add two umpires. Don Harvey will work out along the left field line of the National League umpire. And down along the right field line, Bill Haller, who is a brother of a young gentleman who plays in the National League. Kenny McBride and Jim O'Toole, uh, both of them warming up right now. They have just introduced Norm Seaburn, the unusual type uniforms, and all the National League uh, ball players have now turned to see Norm and the Kelly Green and Gold. Although Cleveland has a very colorful uniform, a home uniform, that is, very colorful, this could be a coming thing in baseball. Color being added to the ballpark. You might be interested in knowing in the American League that the oldest man playing in this ball game is Nelson Fox. He's 35. The youngest, Zoyla Versalis, 22, and what a future. A present, really. The heaviest man is Dick Raddatz, a fireballing pitcher of the Red Sox. He weighs 235. And the lightest, well, I think you already know, that would be little Albie Pearson, 141, and he's gained six pounds since he started to play baseball. The average age of the American League, 27 years. The average height, six feet. The weight, 189. And that just about tells you the American League story. There are many, many other things that can be said about these ball players. Let's go now to the National League and check. The oldest man there, Stan the Man, he's 42 years old. The youngest is Ray Culp, he's 21. Drysdale Atala, 6'6". Mari Wills, the shortest, 5'5". Five, five. They've introduced Mudcat Grant now, a pitcher with the Cleveland Indians in a good one. And he gets uh, quite an ovation from the fans here. Don Drysdale, Ed Bailey, Johnny Edwards, and Joe Torrey lead in the weight department. Each weighs 205. And Mari Wills is the lightest man on the National League squad, 160. And playing in center field from the Los Angeles Angels, Albie Pearson. Well, Albie's being introduced right now. Now, I suppose that watching Albie Pearson play baseball can certainly be a kind of a lift to those of you who are not born to grow to be six feet tall. Albie has shown that he can do it, and he's done it. Al Kaline, one of the great names in baseball, has just been introduced. The ground crew here, getting that infield absolutely sharp. This big ballpark holds 73,811 fans. And they've seen the great ones play here. The ball can get out. It's 410 feet to center field. 380 in each of the slots in right center, deep right center and left center. 365 in straightaway right center and left center. It's 320 feet right down the line. But then it goes out sharply to a wire fence stretching all the way across. There have been 192 home runs hit in this ballpark last year. There were that many. The Tigers ballpark, Tiger Stadium, saw the most in the league, 208. Minnesota, they hit 194 with that power-laden team. And right here, 192. And playing Tricky win, though it does not affect the play itself, the most part. We'll find banners in this ballpark, one blowing one direction and one another. And I'm sure that all of us here in this booth and connected with this broadcast are very much in debt to and wish to compliment those responsible here in Cleveland for all the facilities we have. They're just great. Announcing the umpires now, and they're coming out. 
Duke Snyder. On the white side walls, they say, is down there. And Duke, uh, the white side walls denote the gray hair that come along the top of his ears. Umpires being announced. The players have returned out of the foul lines. We're just a few minutes away from the start of this contest. Jimmy O'Toole is still warming up. And Ken McBride has finished. A Marine Corps color guard in deep left center field. Flag is ready. Sonny Watkins Orchestra, singer, our national anthem. seconds for station identification. This is WGY telling your radio dial Schenectady. One of the peculiar things I saw as they lined up in all these ball players, there are some years on some and most are young. Only one real the uh, fellow who's lost most of his hair and really shouldn't, I think, Dick Grote. Dick is only 32 years old, but uh, in down the, pretty close to the skin there, but a fine ball player. But now, ladies and gentlemen, along our 310 station network, the Armed Forces Radio, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you men of uh, long-standing broadcasting and televising the ball games here in Cleveland, Bob Neal. Bob? Thank you very much, George, and hello, baseball fans all around the world. This has been a spectacular moment that the fans of this area have waited for, not only for Cleveland, but all over the United States. Young, old, they're all here to see the wonderful dream game of baseball, the All-Star Game. Ken McBride, who was born in Huntsville, Alabama, who lives in the west side of Cleveland when he's not pursuing the happiness of the Los Angeles Angels, moves out in the direction of the mound. He's a right-hander, and this is his first All-Star Game start. He's 27, 6, 195 pounder. He's won nine and lost six for the Angels so far. He is considered by uh, many managers in the American League as uh, being the proud possessor of perhaps the best curveball in the game. Mike Malzone, playing third base today for the Boston Red Sox, is a especially proud gentleman because his uh, lovely wife, presented him with a, a new baby boy this morning, and mother and baby doing well in Needham, Massachusetts. So Mr. Malzone indeed uh, probably have a young all-star all of his own on this uh, very appropriate day. At shortstop is uh, Zolo Versales from the Minnesota Twins. This is his first all-star game. He's perhaps the most excited young man in town. Second base, Nelly Fox, who's been around for some time. And at first base is Joe Pepitone, who also is a rookie. Came up part of last year with the Yankees, and uh, this must be quite an honor for him. In left field, Leon Wagner, who started his career in the National League and who came back from Toronto and with the Los Angeles Angels. In center, Albie Pearson, probably the smallest man to ever play in an all-star affair. And Al Kaline out in right field. Earl Batty of the Minnesota Twins will handle the catching as McBride uh, takes his warm-up tosses. Hank Soar, plate umpire, ready to move in. At first base is Bill Jakowski of the National League. At second base is Al Smith of the American League. And at third base is Mr. Pryor. 
So ready to slip in from the Los Angeles Dodgers is Tommy Davis. Davis, a right-hand batter, stands about halfway deep in the batter's box. His feet are fairly close, and he strides into the ball. He carries a 327 batting average with the Dodgers. He's hit eight home runs. And the outfield is playing him straight away. The breeze blowing to right center. First pitch. A little low with a curve, and it's ball one. Wagner is deep in left. Now be Pearson straight away in center, and Al Kaline away from the line in right field. Left side of the infield backed up. Here's the one ball delivery. Outside ball two. Batty working out to the side of the plate as Davis, who stands fairly upright, solidly built, holds that bat right on the end. McBride with a two ball delivery comes down. And a strike catches the outside corner, two and one. The All-Star game underway. The breeze is blowing towards right center. It's about 15 uh, miles per hour. Here's the look in, the wind-up, the 2-1 delivery. A ground ball, slow roller. Malzone charging in, fires across to first, and there's one away. Nice play by Frank Malzone on a chopper to the left side. Came in about five steps on the infield grass, got it across to Joe Pepitone, and there's one away as Ken McBride disposes of the first batter from the National League. Here now is a man of outstanding talents. Superlatives uh, would be a little hard to come by to match all of his talents. Hank Aaron of the Milwaukee Braves, called uh, Henry by his close friends. Aaron stands in, right-hand batter, looks at the pitch low outside, ball one. Aaron currently is uh, hitting 310 for the Braves, has 24 home runs, 63 RBIs. He's a slender build, but a fine uh, ability, uh, muscular-wise. Loose wrists, and he takes a little outside ball, too. Well, McBride went to a two-ball count before he was able to get Davis to work. Well, let's see how he works now on Henry Aaron of the Milwaukee Braves. Outfield around the left, playing him to pull, and the shortstop's deep. There's a ground ball. One hopper to Malzone, the third baseman. Flips across to Pepitone and is two away. So Malzone and Pepitone have had pretty much the uh, activity. Two up and two down for the National League in the top of the first inning and from the St. Louis Cardinals, Bill White. Number 12, Bill White. Bill White started out in life, wanted to be a doctor, got a Bachelor of Science degree, and uh, he has been pursuing a very uh, gainful uh, occupation playing for the St. Louis Cardinals. Takes a swing and fouls it off strike one. There's no score in the ball game. This is the top of the first inning. Two down for the National League. Bill White started today with a 320 average. And he has 14 home runs for the Cardinals. He's driven in 60 runs. He has power and the American League is pulled around to the right respectfully. Two down, one strike. Here's McBride's delivery. Ground ball foul. Wide of first. Goes right by first base coach Bob Kennedy. And the count is two strikes. We've just gotten underway. McBride disposing of the first two men to face him. Tommy Davis of the Dodgers, who bounced out third to first. And Hank Aaron, who also bounced out Malzone to Pepitone. Two up, two down, two strikes on Bill White. McBride checks now with Batty. Into the windup. And the two-strike pitch coming down. Slow curve is a little too high. One and two. Sun shining brightly. It's about 72 degrees. Perfect day for baseball with some beautiful fleecy clouds up ahead. The one-two pitch. Curveball fouls it off. Back near the screen comes Earl Batty, and it's on the screen out of play. One ball, two strike count remains. McBride changed up a little and gave him a change-up curveball. Bill White went after it, but fouled it back out of play. Two down, nobody on. One ball, two strikes. The All-Star game in Cleveland's Municipal Stadium. Fine crowd on hand. Now McBride will work again with a new ball. Outfield shading just a little to the right for White. Nellie Fox deep near the edge of the outfield grass at second base. One, two pitch. There's a bouncer down to Fox, a second baseman. Flips to Pepitone, and the side is retired. Three up and three down for the National League. So at the middle of the first inning, there is no score. 
Those San Francisco Giants certainly making a strong bid for their second straight National League pennant. And one of the top reasons is big Orlando Cepeda. He's really blasted some beauties this year. And speaking of Orlando, he's been a Gillette fan for many years. Right now, he's going along with millions of other fans for Gillette's special offer. Cool, refreshing sun-up aftershave, free, with the $1.50 Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor Set. Gillette Sunup gives you a sense of well-being that lasts, has a crisp, masculine fragrance both men and women prefer. Sunup is the perfect way to top off a comfortable shave with the Gillette Slim Adjustable. This is the razor with the precision micrometer dial, nine different blade settings for light to extra heavy beards, one just right for you. Here's a shaving special you won't want to miss, the Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor with free Gillette Sunup Aftershave, $1.50 plus tax. Or sun up free with Gillette Super Blue Blade 15s at a dollar plus tax. Nelly Fox will be leading it off uh, for the American League. And uh, Nelson is perhaps uh, the last of the bottle bat uh, swingers. Now, Kramer was the man who originally got him to uh, switch into it. Nelly's philosophy is that the little man in baseball should not be swinging for the fence. But try and get on and let somebody else push him ahead. The outfield for the National League has moved in tight with the center fielder Mays uh, virtually at deep second base. Davis is in shallow in left, and uh, Aaron's backed up in right. The first pitch is outside from O'Toole, the left-hander. Jim O'Toole is known as a nervous worker. He uh, likes to walk around and fidget a lot. He's a fine uh, performer. He's won uh, 13 ball games, And he works now with the one-ball delivery. Outside with a curve, and it's ball two. O'Toole uh, is 26, six foot, 200 pounds. 1961, lost two games in the World Series. Hails from Chicago. Two ball delivery. Catches the corner for a strike. Jim O'Toole, as George Bryson pointed out to you, in his early days had uh, think printed across his glove so that he could concentrate. And he is a worker. 2-1 pitch. There's a little looper hit out of the center field. Going to drop in for a base hit. First hit of the ball game by Nellie Fox, who plays that bat like a musician plays that bow, and he just uh, looped one out over second base. A base hit for Fox. The American League gets the first hit of the ball game, and coming up now is the other little man in the game today, Albie Pearson. Albie Pearson. Albie Pearson. Five foot five and about 141 pounder. Left hand batter against the left hander O'Toole. Outfield remaining in shallow. Fox leads away. White holds against him. Here's the pitch. Too high with a curve. Ball one. The breeze is out towards right center. Uh, one of the things not known about Albie uh, very well is he at one time was a fighter. He had some professional fights. His father had over 100. My, that, that is interesting. There's Fox leading away. O'Toole checks him and works down to the plate. And he's going to bunt it and he takes it for a strike. In very fast on the play was Boyer charging in for a possible bunt. Sam Mealy, the manager of the Minnesota Twins coaching at first base, moves in to say something to Fox. Johnny Pesky, the manager of the Boston Red Sox, coaching over at third. And uh, he also is uh, watching the situation. All right, the 1-1 pitch, nobody out. No score in the last of the first inning. There's a high foul cut off near the stands. The breeze will take it out of play. Over is Bill White and the catcher, Ed Bailey, with no chance. So it's one ball and two strikes. We're scoreless. We're in the last half of the first inning of the All-Star game from the Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Nellie Fox, the first base runner of the ball game, holds close at first. White, a very fancy man with a glove, holding against him. Not feel shallow. Here's O'Toole, the left-hander, checking on Fox. Here's the pitch. And he checked his swing, and it's inside. Started to go, held up 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes. Ed Bailey, who hails from the unusually uh, named town of Strawberry Plains, Tennessee, handling the catching. All right, O'Toole is set. Checks on Fox at first. Is ready to work, and the pitch coming down to Pearson. Tries to hold off, fouls it back, out of play, and the count holds two balls, two strikes. O'Toole is solidly built. He has uh, big, broad shoulders. In his first year in uh, professional baseball, won 20 games. 
No score in the ball game. Nellie Fox, the base runner, leads away. White holds against him. O'Toole, the left-hander, ready to work on the 2-2. Down she comes. There's a base hit over the head of Bill White, right out in the corner. Aaron coming over as Fox goes on for third. Pearson makes the turn and holds as the throw goes into second base. Bouncing ball that pounced high over the head of Bill White. He had no chance for it. He could have been on a ladder and not been able to reach it. It took a very high bounce over his head and went down the right field line. So the American League now has a runner at third, a runner at first. As Albie Pearson rules a single, and uh, Nellie Fox moves around the third base. Two men on, nobody out. And Al Kalon in the back. Kaline, the fine outfielder of the Detroit Tigers, who can do everything, stands deep right-hand batter, waiting on O'Toole, who checks the runners at third and first. Pitch, big curve, outside, ball one. Kaline suffered a muscle spasm in the back of his right leg on Saturday, but despite that, he's here. Great honor to be selected, and he's living up to his magnificent standard as a professional baseball player. Here's the check on the runners. O'Toole comes down with a pitch. There's a fly ball hit into left field. Coming in under it is Davis. Fox tags up. Here he comes. There's the throw coming, and it may be close. The runner going down. Here's the play. The plate is out. Davis threw a magnificent strike into the plate to Ed Bailey, and they got Nellie Fox coming in. Boy, what a throw Davis made. Albie Pearson moved down to second on the throw into the plate. So no sacrifice fly, and now as Kaline hits a fly ball to left, and Davis's magnificent throw to the plate gets Nellie Fox. No run for the American League, and Pearson on the throw goes to second base. Well, the fans, you can hear them, are buzzing. Davis uh, threw himself a shot in there like he'd fired it out of a rifle. The batter now is Frank Malzone, the newest papa. Stands in, right-hand batter. O'Toole, the lefty, works his strike. Fastball in the outside corner, about a letter high. Outfield is pulled around to the left. Davis near the corner. Willie Mays in left center. And Hank Aaron well away from the line in right. He's way over by the right center field area. Javier, the uh, second baseman, back near the edge of the grass for the National League, wide away from the bag. Malzone waits on the one-strike pitch. Look back to second. Here she comes. Foul back, and it's strike two. Well, the American League fans in the Cleveland area who do not uh, have an opportunity to see too many of the National League stars are still really buzzing over that throw made by Davis to the plate. And they got Nellie Fox, I would say, rather easily. Two strikes to Malzone. A runner on second for the American League. No score. American League has had two hits. Here's the check by O'Toole. Look back to Albie Pearson and the pitch coming down. Go outside. Fastball. One ball, two strikes. Malzone uh, was tempted, but held off. Frank is having one of the fine years of a very bright Major League career. Sam Mealy motioning out to Albie Pearson, the base runner at second. Two out, no score, one ball, two strikes, last of the first inning. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball two. Oh, it's two balls, two strikes. Albie Pearson uh, taking a very short lead from uh, second base. As you know, the entire St. Louis Cardinal infield has Boyer at third, Grote at short, Javier at uh, second, and Bill White at first. Here's a little looper going out in the left center field. Might drop in. Going out is Grote, and he's got it. Fine play by Dick Grote. Running away from the infield, grab that one. So the American League does not score, and at the end of the first inning, there is no score. You know, thousands of fans at this historic All-Star game today are keeping their own scorecard so they can relive every thrill in the days to come. Now, just imagine running out of ink in the middle of a big inning. You'd really be out of luck. But not with a famous paper-made piggyback pen, because the piggyback pen carries its own spare refill. When you run out of ink, you simply unscrew the cap, reverse the sections inside, and in seconds, you're ready to write again. 
You see, the piggyback pen has two points, two ink supplies, a paper-made exclusive. You never have to worry about running out of ink. Like all paper-made pens, the piggyback positively won't skip. It even writes over butter. And it's unconditionally guaranteed to perform or we replace it free. So don't take a chance in running out of ink in a ball game or anywhere. Get the world's only pen with a built-in spare refill, the paper-made piggyback. Get a paper-made piggyback in a variety of color combinations, only a dollar sixty-nine. Fans have seen some real uh, thrills in the early moments of this game. Fine uh, catch by Dick Grode of a little blooper that looked like it was headed out there. And here now, as we move to the top of the second inning, no score is Willie Mays. Ken McBride retired the first three men to face him on bouncers to the third baseman. Mays looks at a fastball outside. Ball one. The outfield is uh, shaded around to the left for Willie. McBride ready. The one ball pitch. Curve is low. Ball two. Willie Mays of the San Francisco Giants. Hitting 271. He's got 16 home runs and 41 RBIs. The two ball pitch. Strike on the outside corner. Just above the knees. McBride has gone uh, to three hitters so far with a two ball count and then has come back to get them. On deck is Ed Bailey of the San Francisco Giants. Here's the pitch outside, ball three. Three balls and a strike. Ken McBride, the lad from the west side of Cleveland, pitching for the Los Angeles Angels and the American League, facing Willie Mays. 3 1 pitch coming down. Missed ball four. So the National League has its first base runner in the person of Willie Mays. Dangerous man any time on the bases. And uh, up now is Ed Bailey. From the San Francisco Giants, the catcher. Bailey, of course, has uh, played in Cleveland uh, when the Cincinnati Reds and the Indians combined in the Sandlot Baseball Benefit Program. Bailey came on to Cleveland, and so he has uh, seen this ballpark. So Bailey, a left-hand batter, with Willie Mays jumping off to a good lead. Joe Pepitone of the Yankees, the first baseman for the American League, holds against him. Here's the stretch and the pitch. A little low inside, ball one. Batty keeping an eye on Mays. Bailey hitting 250 for the season of the National League so far. Has 13 home runs, 39 RBIs. Mays again jumps off to a lead. Outfield is pulled to the right for this left-hand batter. Here's the check on him. And the pitch. And he checked his swing, and it's ball two. No score. We're in the top of the second inning. American League has had two hits. National League has its first base runner in the person of Willie Mays. He drew a walk. Now Ken McBride. Again, looks in for the sign from Batty. Checks on Mays. About a four-step lead away from first. Pepitone holds against him. Throw over. He's back. Bill Jakowski of the National League, the umpire at first base, standing right over the bag. Again, McBride stretches, checks, and delivers. And he gets it low outside, ball three. Though so McBride is starting to dig himself a little hole. He's given up a pass to Mays. He stands 3-0 and against Ed Bailey, who checks now with Gene Mock, the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, coaching at third, who has checked with Alvin Dark, the manager of the National League team. Mays again with a shorter lead, three steps. Checked by McBride on him. Here's the pitch. Strike called. Got the outside corner. Now let's see whether Bailey goes on the 3-1. He's checking with his third base coach. Moves back in. Earl Batty catching for the American League. Shouting out encouragement to Ken McBride. Mays leads away. There he goes. 3-1 pitch swung on. Throw down to second base. The tag by Versailles and he's safe. Mays had a big jump on the ball. A good throw by Batty right over the top of the bag. Versalis came in beautifully, tried a backhand swipe at Mays, but this base runner, Willie Mays, I'm sure you heard of him, gets in there safely. Stolen base for Willie Mays. Three balls, two strikes now to Bailey. National League with a runner on second. Nobody out, no score. Outfield to the right. Here's the check and the pitch. Foul back out of play. 
Willie Mays had uh, picked up three stolen bases in all-star competition. This is his fourth. Thank you, George. Kind of exciting to watch Willie, uh, George, even uh, when he just stands there. You keep expecting something. I guess he's a perfect ball player. He has everything. Willie looking uh, into the plate. 3-2 pitch coming down. And it's ball four. And Ed Bailey draws the walk. And the National League now has a runner at second, a runner at first. And nobody out. So Ken McBride has uh, given up two walks. And up now is Ken Boyer. Your brother Cletus is the third baseman for the New York Yankees. And uh, when you talk to one of the Boyer brothers, he always wants to tell you about the other one. Ken, uh, with the Cardinals, hitting 302, has eight home runs, 52 RBI. A fierce competitor and certainly a fine all-star. Stands in right-hand batter, feet fairly close together. And McBride gives him a curve, and he pops it to the right side. The infield fly roll will be in effect. Nellie Fox calling for the ball. He has it, and uh, one away. One down, two on, no score. We're in the top of the second inning. Up now is uh, Dick Grote, formerly of the Pittsburgh Pirates, now the captain of the St. Louis Cardinals, and a very inspirational leader. Dick Grove, so far on the year, is hitting 326. He's had five home runs, 40 RBIs for the St. Louis Cardinals, a right-hand batter. Stands uh, with his feet fairly wide apart over a closed stance. Here's the pitch. Fastball strike on the inside corner. Willie Mays, the base runner on second. Ed Bailey, the runner at first. One out. One strike. And Grote, the batter. Grote hits to almost every field, and he rarely strikes out. Versali's trying to keep Mays close. Here's the pitch. Ground ball left side. Malzone can get it, raise it. Here's Willie Mays going around third. He's come on to score as Wagner throws into third. Boy, that ball had eyes as it went beyond the reach of Malzone. Versali's tried for it, and he couldn't get to it, and rolled out into left field. So the first hit for the National League is Dick Groats. And the first run of the ball game goes to the National League as Willie Mays comes on to score. Bailey holds at second base. Run batted in for Groat. And Julian Javier, second baseman from the St. Louis Cardinals, right-hand batter. Bats out of a slight crouch. Bat close together. Wide stance. Ken McBride checks the two runners. Here's the pitch. Here's a drive deep in the left field. If it stays fair, it is curving, and it is a foul ball. Boy, that didn't miss by much. This is Javier's uh, first All-Star game, and he uh, had some ideas. He's a very slender bill. Apparently is loaded with power. So Julian Javier, hitting 270. He's hit five home runs for the Cards, has driven in 22 runs. The outfield playing straight away. It's the National League one, the American League nothing, as we play in the top of the second. One out. Here's the pitch, and it's a strike. Curveball caught the outside corner. Strike two. We were checking some of these players last night on the pronunciation of the names. And Julian, uh, kidding us about the J being a sort of an H in Spanish. Somebody asked him if he had a son, if he'd call him Junior. Two-strike pitch is a curve strike three. Big curveball. Started at him, broke over. So the first strikeout goes to Ken McBride as he gets Julian Javier. And it brings up Jim O'Toole. O'Toole is uh, no automatic out. He prides himself, uh, as most pitchers do, on his ability to swing that bat. He got the bill of a hitter, and up he comes. From the Cincinnati Reds, their fine left-hander, Jim O'Toole. We're starting to get a little activity in the American League bullpen as Jim Bunning is up and starting to throw. Here's the stretch now. The pitch coming to O'Toole. A foul back out of play. Strike one. Two down, two on. National League leads one to nothing. Willie Mays drew a walk, stole second. Bailey walked. Boyer popped to the second baseman. And Grote, with a single between the shortstop and the third baseman, brings in the first run of the game. Now Ken McBride checks with Earl Batty. Ed Bailey, the runner at second. 
Dick Groat the runner at first. Here's the pitch. Outside. Fastball. 1-1. One, one. Bright day for this great affair. Large uh, fleecy clouds out over Lake Erie. As you know, the municipal stadium in Cleveland is on the shores of Lake Erie. And the breeze is uh, slight. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Ground ball to the shortstop. Versailles has it. Goes to Fox for the force on Grote coming over. And so the National League picks up a run. Middle of the second inning. The score, National League 1, the American League nothing. These all-star games are usually pretty tight battles, aren't they, George? Well, they sure are, Bob, except for 1946. Remember that one? The Americans jumped to the two-run lead in the first inning and kept on going to a 12 nothing win. Yes, they had the stuff it takes to stay out in front. It's like Gillette. They've got the research and manufacturing skill that produces superior men's products. Gillette Right Guard, for example, the country's leading power spray deodorant, gives 24-hour protection in just two seconds. Its cool, refreshing mist dries on contact, gets right through for complete protection against odor. 79 cents, or the new economy king size for only a dollar. Another Gillette winner is Extra Rich Foamy Instant Lather that keeps your beard drenched through the entire shave. It gives you a refreshing lift, a clean, cool shave every time, with K34 antiseptic to kill harmful facial bacteria. Gillette Foamy, 79 cents, or the giant economy size, only 98 cents. Uh, warming up the pitch at that time, O'Toole, was Mario Wills, of all people. Well, that's unusual, but uh, that shows the great ability of these aren't all-stars and their desire to get in the game somehow, doesn't it, George? Here's Leon Wagner, powerfully built left-hand batter against the left-hander O'Toole. Swings and misses. Wagner had himself a wonderful year last year with the Angels, and he's having another fine year this year. He's been the scourge of American League pitchers. He can really bang that uh, baseball. He's hit 20 home runs. Takes outside. Her ball down low. 59 RBIs for Leon Wagner and a 330 batting average. He's one of the top 10 in the American League. Outfield straight away for him. Breeze blowing towards right center field. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Fastball caught the corner at the knees, and it's one ball, two strikes. Uh, uh, Leon Wagner is one of the very few ball players in baseball who hit with their hands apart an inch or so on the bat. And he's a pretty fair bid for the triple crown. I should say. Here's the one two pitch by O'Toole. Fastball foul back out of play. And an all star souvenir has uh, just gone into the stands. One ball, two strikes. National League leads one to nothing. This is the last of the second inning. There's a little line drive hit out over the head of the third baseman. Base hit as Wagner reached out and slapped that ball in the left. So the American League has uh, picked up its third hit, although it has failed to score a run. And Jim O'Toole now will have to face Earl Batty, the catcher of the Minnesota Twins. Here's the stretch, the check on the runner. Here's the pitch to Batty. Takes high, ball one. National League converting two bases on balls, a stolen base, and a single to pick up a run in the second inning. American League had two singles in the first but couldn't score as Davis came up with a great throw from the outfield. Pitch to Batty. Outside, ball two. No two now, two and oh. Two balls, no strike. Jim Bunning was uh, loosening up while the National League was at bat. There's a foul and it's two balls and a strike. Two balls, one strike. Nobody out. Here's Earl Batty standing in against the left-hander Jim O'Toole. Outfield has swung around to the left for him. Sun shining brightly. O'Toole checks now on Leon Wagner, the base runner. 2-1 pitch. And a strike call. 
Started the curve way outside of this uh, right-hand batter. Larry Jackson of the Chicago Cubs now starting to throw in the National League bullpen. Right-hander. Two balls, two strikes. O'Toole again checks on Wagner, the runner at first. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Change up curve outside, ball three. O'Toole was trying to set Batty up. Earl Batty wears a sort of uh, side cover on his helmet. Protection against uh, any additional blow is hit about two years ago. 3-2 pitch by O'Toole as he checks on Wagner, comes down. There's a solid smash in the right center field going back out there as Aaron near the fence, and he hauls it in. And back to first base goes Leon Wagner. Ball hit hard by Earl Batty, but Henry Aaron over there in the corner in right center field hauls her in for a long out number one. One away. And up now is Joe Pepitone. Joe Pepitone is really just a few years away from playing in school. And last year as a rookie, uh, was up with the Yankees for a while. This year his first full year honored uh, by his peers as the American League's first baseman. 277 average. Left-hand batter. O'Toole checks on Wagner. Delivers. There's a slash foul into the stands in left field. Pepitone has hit 14 home runs already in the American League. Has driven in 44 runs. Very fancy young fellow with a glove. Most people are greed. He has a great career ahead of him. One strike in the pitch. Curveball. Pounded fouls. Right side. Going off against the facing of the temporary box seats. Two strikes now to Joe Pepitone. National League leading one to nothing. This is the last of the second inning. Joe Pepitone facing O'Toole. And he struck him out. Threw a fastball right by. Strike two. And that is a strikeout for the American League, a strikeout for the National League. As uh, Jim O'Toole gets his first strikeout, Ken McBride gets up his first in the second. And the score, National League one. And the American League, nothing. Here's Zolo Versalis, who's named to his first All-Star game. Right-hand batter crouches over that plate, hands out well away from his body. O'Toole, the left-hander, hits him with a pitch, and on the first base goes Versalis, on the second goes Wagner. So Versalis becomes the first hit batsman of the game. His arms sort of hang out over that plate. He pulled back with the uh, breaking ball, looked like a slider got him. His manager, Sam Mealy, who's the first base coach, is checking him. So Ken McBride now comes up. Two out, two on. National League leading one to nothing. This is the last of the second inning. American League has had three hits. The National League has had but one, but the National League has the run. The outfield fairly shallow in all fields. Straight away, O'Toole, the left-hander, checks Wagner, the runner at second. Delivers. Too high. Ball one. Willie Mays uh, guiding the other members of the America, of the National League outfield. He's got Davis over a little in the corner and left. Aaron almost straight away in right. Here's the check on the runners by O'Toole. The one ball pitch. Right. Went after the curve and didn't get it. One and one. Ken McBride, the pitcher facing Jim O'Toole. The left-hander working for the National League in the last of the second inning. One to nothing. National League leads. Here's the check by O'Toole and the 1-1 pitch. Comes down. Bouncer, slow roller, left side. Rolling foul. So back comes Ken McBride. It's one ball, two strikes. Two out and two on. Breeze has diminished somewhat, although it's still uh, flickering out towards right center field. A perfect day for baseball. Fans being treated to the best of both of the major leagues here in Cleveland, Ohio. One ball, two strikes, so two ready. Works the pitch. Curve ball, and it gets by the third baseman, and the run's going to score. Here's Wagner coming on. Davis up with the ball, throwing in the third base. Safe. Throw down the second and the slide by McBride, and he's safe. 
McBride slapped the single to the left side, enabling Leon Wagner to come on the score, tying up the ball game, and moving with very alert running was Bersales, who went to third, and on the throw to third, the pitcher McBride moved to second. So a run batted in for Ken McBride, who uh, helped his own cause with Edmund. Scored as a single. So a good job by Zorro Versalles with alert base running, getting him around to third, and McBride alert to the situation of Versalles moving to third and with the throw going that way. He just picked him up and moved on, and with a long slide into second base, has given the American League runners at second and third. Two men out, and Nellie Fox, the batter. Little conference now between Dick Grote and the pitcher O'Toole. The outfield is shallow, of course, for Fox, with the exception of Aaron, the right fielder. Fox can pull the ball. Now Bill White moves back to first baseman. Runners lead away. Score tied, one and one in the last and second. Here's the pitch. Fastball inside the Fox, and it's ball one. Ken Boyer, the third baseman, is playing about two steps off the edge of the grass. He cannot move in too far because he wants to keep Versalles fairly close at third. McBride leads away at second. Here's a little looper hit down the line. Davis is there, and he's got it. So Fox lines to Davis, and the side is retired, but the American League ties it up. So at the end of the second inning, the score is National League 1, the American League 1. Ran into Yankee manager Ralph Hawk just before the teams took the field. Said he noticed that many of the fellas are already swinging to new Gillette sun-up aftershave. You get it free with the purchase of the slim adjustable razor set on Gillette's special offer. Men prefer sun-up's crisp masculine fragrance. The gals go for it too. Sun-up is cool, refreshing, gives you that top-of-the-morning feeling. A sense of well-being that lasts. And for comfortable, long-lasting shaves, it's the Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor all the way. Whatever your combination of skin and beard, the Slim Adjustable suits it to a T. Gillette's exclusive precision dial has nine numbered blade settings, and one is just right for you. Remember, you get the generous two-ounce size of Gillette's new sun-up aftershave free with the Slim Adjustable Razor Set at $1.50 plus tax. Or it's free with Gillette Super Blue Blade 15s at $1.00 plus tax. Well, we now have a tied-up ball game. The American League with uh, two hits in that inning. A hit batsman was vital to uh, keeping their hopes alive. There were no errors. Two men are left. And it's tied up 1-1 as we go to the top of the third. Tommy Davis takes the fastball low outside. The Dodger left fielder, who was the uh, National League batting champion last year with a 346 batting average, made a great throw in the first inning. Takes low outside, ball two, as Ken McBride works to him. Jim Bunning is up again and throwing in the American League bullpen. Bunning worked on uh, Sunday for the Tigers. And McBride uh, is working with three days rest. A solid smash in the left center field. Base hit. Oh, that ball really took off. Davis makes the turn at first and holds as Albie Pearson fires it into Bersani's the shortstop. So Tommy Davis drilled one. And that is hit number two for the National League. Here's Hank Aaron of the Milwaukee Braves. Right-hand batter. And Bunning is starting to throw a little harder in the bullpen. He's tied one and one, the American League, with four hits. These all-stars have played errorless ball. McBride checks on the runner, Davis. Here's the pitch there. Curve, blow outside, ball one. Not field straight away. McBride working for the American League. Checks now, and Davis delivers to Aaron. Low inside, ball two. Ken's trying to get these uh, National League uh, sluggers to go for something less than uh, right down the middle of the alley. Aaron works very quietly, but can swing that bat. Hits this one, pow. McBride worked him inside, and uh, Aaron pulled it over the roof back of third base. 
Aaron keeps that bat well away from uh, his body, back and cocked around his right ear. Leon Wagner, the left fielder for the American League, backed up near the fence. Albie Pearson over in left center, and a big hole open in right center. Two balls and one strike now to Hank Aaron of the National League Milwaukee Braves. Tommy Davis, the Dodgers, leads away. Here's the pitch, a bouncing ball to Malzahn. Goes to Fox for one, and make, can't make the throw. Davis in there uh, sort of upset Fox so that he could not get his throw away. He didn't dump him, but sort of uh, kept Fox from making the throw. Force play, Aaron becomes the runner in the fielder's choice. Play went from Malzahn to Fox. One away, runner at first, and Bill White the batter. We're in the top of the third, and the score is tied. National League one, American League one. Tommy Davis is a very fast man and carries 200 pounds in his frame, and that's why Nellie Fox sort of stepped out of there. Low and in the dirt, good pickup by Batty. One ball to count, one out. One to one ball game in the top of the third inning. White sort of works that bat around like youngster would work a uh, little stick. He keeps it loose. Ball two inside. Now White checks in with Gene Mock, the uh, coach at third base for the National League. Moves back in, checks his belt. Hank Aaron, the base runner at first, staying close with Pepitone holding against him. McBride checking with Earl Batty, the catcher. Has the sign. Checks on Aaron. Delivers. There's a swing and a high bouncer. Pepitone grabs it and is going to go to first and he just gets there. He looked down a second as if he might throw to Versalles to try and get Aaron. Realized that he would not be able to get the speedy Aaron and elected to race to the bag. Beat White. White bounces out. Pepitone unassisted. There is no sacrifice there. Aaron is moved down to second. And it brings up Willie Mays, number 24 of the San Francisco Giants. Two down, score tied, one and one. We're in the top of the third. Aaron with a good lead from second. Ken McBride works to Willie, and it's high, ball one. Willie Mays has 14 runs in 14 All-Star games, hitting 422 in All-Star competition. So he's been spectacular. A little low, ball two. Outfield shades a little to the left for Willie, and all of them uh, respectfully deep. Versailles, the shortstop, very deep. Hank Aaron with a good lead from second base. Two out, two ball pitch. To right, caught the corner. Bride started that ball about the center of the plate, nipped the outside corner as he broke it down and away from Mays. Jim Bunning of the Tigers still working. Here's the next pitch. Low outside. He tried to get him to go for the fastball. Missed with it. Three and one. So a big pitch coming up for Ken McBride. Three balls, one strike. Two out air and the runner on second. And on deck is the left-hand batting Ed Bailey. Mays walked his first time up, scored the National League's run. Swings and drills a single into left center. Here's Aaron making the turn at third. He'll score. Willie Mays makes the turn at first and holds as the throw goes into second base. So Willie Mays drills one. And it's now a two-to-one ball game as the National League goes out ahead. Third hit. Boy, the National League have made those base hits count. Aaron coming on. So oh, it was a vital play that the bouncer by Bill White could not be fielded in time to throw to second for a sacrifice or a force play at second. And Aaron, as a result of the base hit, comes on to score. National League 2, American League 1. May is now the base runner, and Ed Bailey the batter. He walked his last time up. Ken McBride works to him, and he swings and misses. Strike one. The outfield is uh, straight away. And the right-hander watches Willie Mays. He's got a pretty good lead, Joe Pepitone. There goes Mays, and here Batty will not make the throw. The pitch was low inside. Mays looking around. He lost his cap about four feet from the bag. He wondered uh, where the ball was. 
ball was down low. Batty grabbed it and uh, decided not to make the throw for fear he'd throw it away. One and one now with two out. Willie Mays with a good lead from second. Here's the pitch. Here's a base hit in the right field. It's going to go through. Here's Mays making the turn at third as Albie Pearson is up with the ball and throws into second base. So Bailey rips one into right center field. And the National League goes ahead 3-1 to one on only four base hits. In comes Willie Mays after making it to second base, brought home by Bailey's single. And a run batted in for Bailey. Two out. And Ken Boyer, the third baseman from the Cardinals, who popped to the second baseman in the second inning. McBride works to him, gets a strike over the outside corner. Base hit by Willie Mays gave him his 20th hit, which ties him with Stan Musial for greatest number of hits among the present company in all-star competition. So it's two strikes now to Ken Boyer. Outfield is shaded around to the left a little bit. The runner at first base is Ed Bailey. Boyer waits now as McBride delivers the curve way outside. One ball, two strikes. Well, the National League uh, started to go to work with two out. These have been scorching singles. There have not been any uh, home runs. Three to one, the National League leads. It's even. There's a big curve outside, and it's ball two. Two balls, two strikes. This is the top of the third inning. The National League three, the American League one. Joe Pepitone, the first baseman, playing back of the runner by about two steps. Ed Bailey leads away. Ball three outside, three and two count. Three balls, two strikes. So Ken McBride is experiencing a little trouble. He uh, comes in close with that pitch. And these uh, swingers from the National League are banging that ball. Bailey will be going. There he goes, 3-2 pitch. Fly ball hit into left field. Leon Wagner moves in on the warning path. Should have it, and does, and that's all. But the National League has picked up two runs in the middle of the third inning. The score is National League 3, the American League 1. Well, again this year, the All-Star Game is a top attraction, just like Gillette's special offer. Free sun-up aftershave with the purchase of the 150 Slim Adjustable Razor Set. Sun-up gives you that top-of-the-morning feeling, a sense of well-being that lasts. And its crisp, man-style fragrance really charms the ladies, too. For the fastest, most comfortable shaves of your life, try the popular Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor. The Slim's exclusive precision dial has nine different blade settings. One suits your combination of skin and beard exactly. It's light and long with a slim, compact shaving head for those hard-to-reach areas like under the nose. Pick up the Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor Set at the $1.50 plus tax and get the generous two-ounce size of Sun Up Aftershave free. Or Sun Up is free with Gillette Super Blue Blade 15s at a dollar plus tax. We pause 30 seconds now for station identification. If you're buying a new car, a boat, or anything else you'd like to finance, be sure to check with Industrial Bank of Schenectady to find out how easily and economically you can arrange the loan you need. Industrial Bank offers low-cost loans for any worthwhile purpose, and you'll find a ready welcome whenever you care to stop in to talk over your needs. It's Industrial Bank of Schenectady at 224 State Street and the Woodlawn Branch with a drive-in window at 1815 State Street in Schenectady. This is WGY Schenectady. We have a new battery now. We have uh, Larry Jackson of the Chicago Cubs coming on to pitch for the National League. Johnny Edwards of the Cincinnati Reds will do the catching. That's the uh, first changes that we have seen in this all-star classic. National League leads 3-1 to one as we go to the last of the third inning. And the uh, first batter to face the right-hander from the Chicago Cubs, Larry Jackson, will be the outfielder from the Los Angeles Angels, Albie Pearson. 
Alvin Dark wanted to have a clarification from umpire Hank Soar of uh, where these uh, fellas might go in the batting order, for I'm sure that the members of the press will be interested in knowing how they uh, will bat. And I think that's what being sent along, a slight, uh, no, maybe not. Edwards is now heading back towards the uh, dugout. Jackson, in the meantime, is playing uh, catch with the uh, shortstop. So it may well be that uh, there might have been a, a change here. And uh, Edwards is going back in. Could it be that they're not going to take out the catcher? Got to play three innings. I think you just reminded Alvin Dark that the starters must play the first three innings, and that's what it is. And so uh, back comes Ed Bailey. All right, we're all straight away now. Ed Bailey, who had uh, virtually uh, was all set to watch the rest of the game along with us, now comes back out. So we're ready to go as Larry Jackson comes on from the Chicago Cubs to take over the pitching chores. Jackson of the Cubs is 9-7, and seven, a right-hander. Works a fastball outside and high. Ball one. O'Toole worked two innings and gave up four hits. There's a strike. One and one. O'Toole did not walk a batter, and he struck out one. He hit one, and he surrendered a total of four hits. He's charged with one run. Here's the 1-1 pitch. There's a drive foul. Boy, Abby Pearson laid a little wood on that ball and lined it into the lower box seats. The outfield playing straight away. They are not shallow for Albie Pearson. Here's the one-two pitch by Jackson. Inside, ball two. Two and two. Alvin Dark had sent Edwards out. Of course, these managers want all of these young men to play. Here's the two-two pitch. There's a looper foul curving down near the stands, racing over his Davis, but no chance. Out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Managers want to give every opportunity to all of these young men who have been selected to get into the game. The 2-2 pitch coming to Pearson. Bouncer foul going into the American League uh, dugout. <laughs> that one got one of his uh, associates down there in the dugout who just shouted out, we're on the same team. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch to Pearson. Too high, ball three. Larry Jackson, one of the most capable performers on the mound. Many years starred with the St. Louis Cardinals, now doing an outstanding job with the Cubs. Works on a 3-2 pitch. There's a line drive in the left center field. It's going to be in there for a base hit. Chasing after it is Willie Mays. There goes Albie Pearson digging for two. Mays up with the ball, fires it into third, and Albie Pearson with a double. are applauding for two things. One, the power and placement of that base hit by Albie Pearson that went all the way to the fence, and the other, the spectacular fielding by Willie Mays, who on the dead run circled around behind Davis at the fence, came up with the ball, came out from behind, and fired it into third, all in the same motion. The score, the National League three, the American League one, with the American League having a base runner on second, hit number five for the American League, and here's Al Kaline, hit a fly ball to left. Jackson, the right-hander, works to him with a strike. Four hits surrendered by O'Toole. Jackson surrenders a base hit to the first man he faces. All right, Albie Pearson leads away. Here's the look back to him by Jackson, and the pitch to Kaline. Swings a bouncer foul. Wide of third, and a happy souvenir. The uh, Cleveland Indians have erected some temporary box seats around the front of the normal stands area, and that little fence is shorter than the regular fence, and fans, of course, with good exercise, are picking off a few souvenirs. Two strikes now to K-Line. Stands deep in that box. Jackson looks back to Pearson on second. 3-1 the score. National League leads. 3-1 pitch. Strike call. And 
Al Kaline called out on strikes as Jackson exploded the curveball over the outside corner. So Jackson gets his first strikeout, second registered by National League pitches today. Frank Malzone, he popped to the shortstop his Malzone. first time up. Frank Malzone of the Boston Red Sox, hitting 329, has uh, 12 home runs, 53 RBIs in the regular season. Takes low outside, ball one. Ed Bailey remaining in the game, handling the catching. And Larry Jackson, who took over the pitching from Jim O'Toole, working with Albie Pearson, the base runner. National League leads 3-1 to one as we play in the last and the third. Here's the stretch check back to Pearson, the base runner. And cutting over is Javier. And all of a sudden, it was almost a pitch. Now, Zong was hoping the pitch would be made. Javier broke over to uh, try a pickoff play on Pearson. <laughs> and now Alpi's looking back out towards him. One ball pitch. And it's low outside. Ball two. Look for a moment like Alpi was a little frightened by all that commotion back there. He was looking in to see uh, what was developing in front of him. Two balls a count. One out, one on. And a strike. Now, Zone tried to check his swing, but it was over, and it's two and one. The outfield for the National League is playing Frank Malzone well around the left. They're giving him virtually all of the right field area. Hank Aaron is in right center. Willie Mays in left center. And Davis around the corner and left. Jackson checks Pearson, the 2-1 pitch. There's a little looper hit on the left field. That's going to be a base hit. Here's Alby Pearson hitting third. He's going to score. Davis throws into second base. It's 3-2 now. The National League leads. So Malzone just stroked that uh, little short looper out into left field. Malzone gets a run batted in, and that is hit number six for the American League. 3-2, the National League leads, and here's Leon Wagner. He stroked a single in the second inning and scored the first American League run. So Malzone celebrating the birth of his new baby boy. Gets himself a base hit. Wagner, a slow roller right side. Bill White waiting for it. Flips to Jackson. Covers and out at first is Wagner. Moving down to second is Malzone. Wagner sort of topped that ball up on the handle. White made a good play on the ball, electing to let Jackson continue, who had broken from the mound towards first. Threw it over to him. And the play goes from the first baseman, White, to the pitcher. Malzone moving to second base on the play. So the American League has a runner on second, two out, and Earl Batty, the batter. He lined to the right fielder, Hank Aaron, first time up. Batty with a very open stance has his left foot pointed down towards third base. He's a right-hand batter. Now zone leads from second. Jackson, the right-hander, ready to work. Here's the pitch. Foul off into the stands. Strike one. That one started in the upper deck, wound up in the lower deck, and the fan that got it did not expect it. Two out, one strike, three to two the score. The National League leads by one. Malzone represents the tying run. Batty swings, and there's a base hit into center field. Malzone makes the turn at third as Mays comes up with the ball, and he will score. Score is tied 3-3. Three, three. Earl Batty of the Minnesota Twins comes through with a base hit. Off Jackson, his third hit. Jackson now has given up two runs. And here's Joe Puppetone, the free-swinging, very capable first baseman of the New York Yankees. Outfield moves around to the right. Two out, runner at first, score tied, 3-3. Three, three. And Jackson, the right-hander, checks on the runner at first. Batty works to Puppetone. A swing and a miss. Strike one. Bill White playing back of the bag with Puppetone, uh, the batter. Joe Pepitone waiting now, left-hand batter against the right-hander. Here's the pitch to him, and he swings and he drills one in the right field. Henry Aaron is there. He makes the catch, and that retires the side. 
but the National League gets two runs, and at the end of three, the score is tied. National League three, American League three. Although Brooks Robinson isn't in the lineup at the moment, Casey Stengel rates him as one of the finest third basemen since Pie Trainer. Brooks is a pro who plays with the enthusiasm of a kid. He's enthusiastic about Gillette, too, one of our biggest boosters. He's already sold on Gillette's newest product, Sunup Aftershave. Right now, you can get Sunup free with the purchase of 150 Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor Set. Sunup gives you that top-of-the-morning feeling, and the girls go for its crisp masculine fragrance, too. And how about that Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor? Set the dial to one of nine numbered blade settings, the one that suits your skin and beard exactly for a shave that can't be equal. The slim is light and long with a newly designed shaving head for those trouble spots like under the nose and chin. So get the slim adjustable razor plus new sunup aftershave free at a dollar and a half plus tax. Or it's free with Gillette Super Blue Blade 15s at a dollar plus tax. We have a new pitcher now for the American League. Jim Bunning comes on to take over. Bunning, uh, who hails uh, from down Kentucky Way, used to, when he uh, traveled during the uh, baseball season, would have Bertie Tebbets living in his house. Bertie Tebbets was then the manager of Cincinnati. Jim Bunning is 31. He's 6 foot 395 pounder. Hails from Fort Thomas, Kentucky. And this is the uh, fifth time that Jim Bunning has been selected. He's uh, pitched 12 innings, has won one and lost none, has given up only four hits in all that time. Dick Grove of the St. Louis Cardinals will face Bunning. And here's the first pitch. Fastball for a strike. Ken McBride, who started, gave up three runs and gave up four hits. It's tied three and three as we go to the top of the fourth. Grote had a single his last time. Takes a curve. Big, slow curve. Started at this batter and then broke over. Bunning is a, I guess ball players would say, a very difficult man to follow because he throws almost three-quarters sidearm and sort of falls towards first base as he delivers the ball. So Grote now moves up a little in the batter's box. And Bunning is ready to go with a two-strike pitch. Score tied, 3-3, a real thriller. Here's the two-strike delivery. Curve is low outside, one and two. Some American League batsmen try to bunt on Bunning, figuring that with his move towards first, if they can bunt the ball towards third, they uh, lessen some of his effectiveness. Outfield is shaded to the opposite side for Grote. One ball and two strikes. The pitch. There's a fly ball hit into right field. Al Kaline is there. Moves back a couple of steps. Hauls it in. And there's one away. So Dick Grote is out number one in the top of the fourth. Ken McBride, who worked the first three innings, gave up four hits. Walked two batters. Struck out one. And gave up three runs. Here's Julian Javier. Second baseman from the St. Louis Cardinals called out on strikes in the second inning. He's batting in the number eight spot. Top deal for the American League has Wagner in left, Albie Pearson in center, and Kaline in right. Straight away, curve for a strike. Bunning, with his very effective sidearm motion, makes his curve doubly effective since he starts it right in at him. Frank Malzone, the third baseman, about even with the bag. Zoilo Versales of Minnesota, the shortstop, deep. Here's the one-strike pitch. Fastball outside. One ball and one strike. Three to three, the score. Seven hits for the American League, four hits for the National League. We've had one double. The rest have been singles. Albie Pearson of the Los Angeles Angels with two hits. The 1-1 pitch. There's a high pop near the mound. Now Zone shading his eyes. Moving in as his glasses down and makes the catch. That sun is brutal about this time. But Frank Malzone takes it. Two down. Two up, two down. As we play in the top of the fourth, 3-3 three, three ball game. And we will have Larry Jackson, the batter. Larry Jackson. Jackson from the Chicago Cubs. 
the pitcher. Bats as he throws from the right side. And the outfield is straight away for him, not too deep. Swings, and he drives one into center field. Albie Pearson is there. The little fella straightens away, makes the catch, and that retires the side. National League goes down in one, two, three order. At the end of three and a half innings, the score, National League three, the American League three. Bob Olovi to Pinson just missed making the all-star team. Having quite a year, isn't he? He sure is. I had a chat with Vader recently, and is he happy about that batting average? And another thing he's enthusiastic about is new Gillette Sunup Aftershave. You know Sunup is available free with the purchase of the 150 Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor Set. For the top-of-the-morning feeling fans, try Sunup, Gillette's new aftershave. Sunup gives you a wonderful sense of well-being that lasts, and its crisp man-style fragrance really charms the ladies. For shaves that are fast and refreshing, clean and comfortable, it's the popular Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor. The Slim's exclusive precision dial has nine different blade settings. One suits your skin and beard exactly, and it has a trim, compact shaving head for those hard-to-shave areas. Get Gillette Sunup after shave free with the Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor to $1.50 plus tax, or it's available free with Gillette Super Blue Blade 15s at $1.00 plus tax. Last half of the fourth inning, Zarlo Versales, the shortstop from the Minnesota Twins, playing in his first All-Star game, hit by a pitch by O'Toole, stands in against Larry Jackson, the right-hander. Here's the arm coming down on the pitch, a bunt attempt foul. Strike one. Boyer came charging in, and that's one of the reasons he's on the All-Star team. He really moves. Not feel around the left. One strike pitch. Bouncing ball. Going through. Base hit for Versali. Makes the turn at first, but holds as Davis, with that great arm, throws in the second base. So the American League starts off here in the fourth inning with a base hit. That's hit number eight. Fourth hit off Larry Jackson, who came on to work in the third. O'Toole worked the first two innings. And Jim Bunning, the batter. Bunning, who took over for Ken McBride. Pretty good swinger. Bats from the right side, deep in the batter's box, holds that bat well away from his head. Boyer looking for a bunt. It is bunted. It's foul. So the score tied 3-3. The American League trying to move Versalles, a very fast man, down to second with the top of the batting order coming up. Now a little exchange uh, among the National League All-Stars. Boyer has moved into the cut of the grass at third base. Bill White is playing uh, inside of the bag at first, ready to charge in. And, of course, this is one of the most beautiful plays in baseball to watch its execution. Throw to first. Back safely. Close play. Bill White throwing that glove down on Versalles. Good throw by Jackson. One strike in the stretch. Check on Versalles. Leads away. Here's the pitch to Bunning. And he bunts it along the first baseline. Grabbing it is White. Can't go to second. Goes to first. Throwing to Javier. Sacrifice is good. And Bunning moves Versalles to second base. So we have a runner on second for the American League. Score tied 3-3, and Nelly Fox, who lined to the left fielder and singled his first time up, and who almost scored in the first inning, would have, except for Tommy Davis, who fired a real strike in on him. Jim Bowden of the New York Yankees starting to throw in the Yankee bullpen, and we're about to get some activity in the National League bullpen. Versalles leads from second as the pitch comes down, a bunt down a third baseline foul. Fox just dropped the bat, let the bat do the work, and he was halfway down the uh, first baseline. Little conference as Ed Bailey shot some encouragement out to Larry Jackson. The outfield is shallow for Fox with Willie Mays practically playing deep shortstop and Tommy Davis at deep third base. All right, one strike, one out. A runner on second. Here's the pitch to Fox. Fouls it back on the screen, and it's strike two. Ray Culp of the Philadelphia Phils, the right-hander, goes to work in the National League bullpen. Jim Bouton, the right-hander from the Yankees, starting to throw in the American League bullpen. 
Three to three the score. Eight hits for the American League, four hits for the National League. Check back on Versalles now by Larry Jackson. Pitch to Nelly Fox. Down low. Nice stop by Bailey, and it's one and two. Zorro Zoilo. Zoilo Versalles. Opened this inning with a single. Sacrificed to second by Bunning. Standing there with a good lead. Jackson checks the sign. Checks the runner. Here's the pitch. And it's inside. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Nelly Fox, who despite the fact that he's the oldest American League player in this game, shows the enthusiasm of a young boy, chokes up on that bat about six inches, looks out to Jackson, who's ready to work. Pitch coming down. And he throws bat at it, dropped out of uh, the catcher's uh, mitt. Now going to third is Versalles, and the throw to first, and he's out. Strikeout with an assist going down. He didn't see the, th- the ball, and Versalles moved to third base on the play. Ed Bailey could not find that ball. And by the time he had discovered it, and the time Fox, who was discouraged by the fact that he had struck out, could move on out. The throw was to first, but Versalles moved to third. Two down now, and Albie Pearson, with two hits in two times at bat, stands in against Jackson. Here's the pitch. It's to the right on the outside corner. Albie Pearson, the littlest man in the game. A double all the way to the fence in left center in the third. Started the American League rally. They're going to bunt it and took it. Strike two. Outfield is straight away. Jim Bowden throwing in the American League bullpen. Ray Culp from the Philadelphia Phillies throwing in the National League bullpen. Larry Jackson now with a two-strike count on Albie Pearson. Two out, runner at third. Here's the pitch. Down low, one and two. Right side of the infield for the National League, well back with this left-hand batter. Ken Boyer, not taking any chances on Pearson, is playing even with the bag. One-two pitch on the way, and it's too low for ball two. Score tied, 3-3. American League have uh, picked up eight hits, the National League have four, but the runs are the same. Three and three. This is the fourth inning, last of the fourth. Down low, ball three, as Albie Pearson uh, attempted but held off. The ball broke down and away. Three balls, two strikes. Two out, Versailles, the base runner at third. On deck is Al Kaline. Here's Jackson with the 3 2 pitch. Down she comes, and it's a ground ball foul. Bill White with a Good glove comes up with it, but a foul ball. Always an impressive sight to take a look at the umpires who right on the line. Hank Sore at the plate, Bill Jakowski at first base. Bill Haller of the American League out there along the line. 3-2 pitch coming down. Struck him out. Gave him a curveball, changed the speed. Got him on it. So the American League fails to score in their half of the fourth. And at the end of four innings, the score is tied. National League 3, American League 3. You said it, George. Stan has appeared in 24 straight. You just can't beat that for consistency. It's like Gillette's record in coming up with brand new products. The newest is Sun Up Aftershave. Right now, it's yours free with the purchase of the Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor Set at 150 plus tax. For that top of the morning feeling, try Gillette's new Sun Up Aftershave. Men prefer the way it feels. Men and women alike go for its crisp masculine fragrance. And for comfortable, long-lasting shaves, it's the Slim Adjustable Razor. Its trim, compact design is made to order for those hard-to-reach shaving areas. And nine numbered blade settings on the Slim's micrometer dial lets you pick the one that's just right for your combination of skin and beard. 
Get new Gillette Sun Up Aftershave free with the slim adjustable razor at $1.50 plus tax, or it's free with Gillette Super Blue Blade 15s at $1 plus tax. Well, we have a change in the American League lineup now. Bobby Richardson of the New York Yankees has moved in to play second base. So here's Tommy Davis leading off against Jim Bunny. Ball one outside, fastball. Score tied 3-3. The American League have been able to pick up eight hits, four hits for the National League. Bunning with his familiar pose, the glove and the hand on the knee, works now into the windup, the one ball pitch. Down low, ball two, a little inside, two and nothing. So Nelly Fox leaves. Bobby Richardson is in at second base. Score tied, three and three, as we play in the top of the fifth inning. Jim Bunning with the two ball pitch. Misses, ball three. Davis has bounced out, single sharply in the left. And his uh, excellent throw in the first inning brought this crowd virtually to its feet. Three and nothing count. Bunning with the three and nothing pitch. Hits it over, three and one. Now Davis takes a look down to Gene Mock, the Philadelphia Phillies manager, coaching at third base for the National League. And on the 3-1, we'll see what Tommy Davis decides to do. The wind-up by Bunning, pitch on the way. And he takes it for ball four outside. So Bunning gives up a walk. And the National League has a base runner. That is the third base on balls given up by American League pitcher today, Ken McBride, who worked the first three, walked Mays and Bailey. Bunning, who retired the side in order in the fourth, gives up his first walk. And up there now is Hank Aaron. He's forced to run her and bounced out. He'd like umpire Hank Shore to take a look at the baseball, Earl Batty reaching up. And Hank Shore says it's okay. Back out she goes. Amazing thing of baseball that's delivered by these all-star pitchers. Travels probably in excess of 100 miles an hour. The batter sometimes can notice a little smudge or something on it. Here's the stretch. The check on Davis by bunting the pitch. And it's outside. Ball one. Aaron takes a look down to Gene Mock. Score tied 3-3. Three, three. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Three runs on four hits, no errors for the National League. Three runs on eight hits and no errors for the American League. Outfield deep in all positions for Aaron. Pitched by Bunning. There's a high fly ball into right center field. Albie Pearson is under it and takes it. And there's one away in the fifth inning. One down. Up now is Bill White. White, the left-hand batter. He's bounced out to the third baseman, grounded out to Joe Pepitone, the first baseman. He's 0 for 2. The outfield naturally with this powerful left-hand batter swings to the right. Richardson in now at second base, moves deep. Now is on a cutaway from third in the event of a bunt or a slash on that side. Bunning checks on Davis, the runner at first. Pitch coming. There's a foul back in the stands out of play. One strike to Bill White. Score tied, 3-3. Bill White is the first to reach 100 hits uh, of any batsman in either league in this season of 1963. He's been stroking that ball for the St. Louis Cardinals. One out, one on, one strike. The next pitch. He hits a little number to the left side. Malzone coming over, goes back to second. A Richardson ball bounces out of his glove. There's Davis going on. And White had made a big turn at first, but we'll get back safely. Malzone came in on that number that was hit uh, just to the left of the mound in trying to throw to Richardson. He hit him up on the hands. And the ball bounced out of Bobby Richardson's glove. Official scorers will uh, talk that one over. I'm sure White will get on on the fielder's choice. 
And now the question is whether... They have charged an air, and I believe to Malzone. High and outside, ball one. One ball to count. Did you hear that, George? I didn't hear it, no, sir. An air charged to the American League on the play at second base, enabling uh, Davis to go on to third. One ball to count. One out. Score tied 3-3. Three, three. First air of the ball game. Bill White, the runner at first. Davis, the runner at third. Willie May is the batter. Here's the one ball pitch, and he fouls it back. Bunning, not an easy man for a right-hander to hit. Culp will undoubtedly come on in the last of the fifth. He has concluded his warm-up tosses and has moved near the gateway out in left field. The outfield shades to the left. The 1-1 pitch to Mays. Swings and hits the number to the right side. Pepitone grabs the ball, is going to the bag, and Davis comes on to score. Well, Willie Mays just pushed that ball to the right side. Pepitone grabbing the ball, stepped on first. And Ed Bailey, who had moved out there, is called back. As Willie Mays grounds out to the first baseman, Davis comes on to score, and it's 4-3 to three, the National League. And on to second base goes uh, Bill White. Well, Mays moves up the runner. And here comes Stan the Man Musio. Fourth game, hitting 323 with that very uh, famous pose of his, with a little hula thrown in besides. Runner on second, pitch is a swing and a miss for a strike. The official scores have uh, indicated to us that the error has been charged to Bobby Richardson. The error which enabled Davis to go on to third. Four to three, the National League now leading. On Willie Mays, bouncer to the first baseman, Pepitone, bringing Davis in from third. Pitch to Musio. Swings and drives one in the right field. Kaline is there, and he makes the catch. Line drive to Al Kaline. So, no uh, one run on no hits, one error. And it's uh, the end of four and a half innings. National League four, the America League three. The first half of today's game has been brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. The second half of today's game is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. ...in the business. That's Chrysler, backed by your Chrysler Motor Corporation dealer's five-year, 50,000-mile warranty. Think of it. You can own a Chrysler for five years or drive it for 50,000 miles, whichever comes first, before its warranty runs out. The warranty protects the power train of your Chrysler, the vital parts of your car that would require expensive repairs if needed. No other American car offers you this protection for such a long time. All you need to do is make sure your Chrysler has been serviced according to Chrysler certified car care schedules. And when you own a Chrysler, you do that anyway. What's more, you can own a Chrysler right now for prices that start as low as some models of the low-priced field. And you get Chrysler's clean, custom looks, luxurious interiors, Husky V8 performance. Plus, and don't forget it, your Chrysler dealer's five-year, 50,000-mile warranty, the best guarantee of quality in the business. Stay tuned for warranty details later in this program. We move to the last half of the fifth inning. The score, National League 4, the American League 3. Now my pleasure to turn this microphone over to the gentleman of the Kansas City A's, Mr. George Bryson. Thank you very much, Bob. In the last half of the fifth inning will be K-Lion, Malzone, and Wagner scheduled against Ray Kulp of the field. Kulp's a right-hander. Very good fastball. Throws hard. 
good slider and curve. Johnny Edwards has now come in to catch. Cincinnati catcher. And Edwards will be batting in the number nine spot. The first pitch down the K-lines are curve, call strike. No other changes in the lineup right now. It's still Davis, Mays, and Aaron. Boyer, Groh, and Javier, and White. Brand new battery. Cope in the windup. Here's the pitch on the way. K-line bounces it back to the left side of the mound. A backhand play, but the pitcher throws the first. Got him. Nice play. K-line bounces one. Past the mound, off to the side of the mound, and Ray Cope went off towards third, backhanded it, and threw him out. One out on the fifth, and the score all tied. Correction. Score is four to three, National League leading. Frank Malzone, right hand hitter, popped out to the shortstop, single, scored a run, and knocked in a run. Right hand hitter, pitches low, ball. On Miles Zone, they play around the left and short all the way around. Dick Groth, the shortstop, back in the hole. Right hand hitter, Ray Cup in the windup, delivers. A call strike on the hands over the inside corner. So it's now a ball on the strike. Score four to three, the National League leads. Good ball game. Sparkling plays. Willie Mays in left center field. Here's the pitch. Hedy's bat on a check swing that's a strike and it's a ball and two strikes one out on the fifth Wudashik a left hander in the bullpen now the Houston Colt 45s Culp of the Phils facing Malzone of the Red Sox a ball and two strike count next pitch on the way is a fastball a bit high all even out two and two has been a starting pitcher for the Phillies in some relief. Here's the 2-2 pitch. It's taken a bit low, and we go all the way now. Three balls, two strikes. They give Malzone all the right field line, perhaps 100 feet of it all the way. I think it was a dead pull hitter. Here's the windup now. Payoff pitch. Curveball popped up back of the plate. Be back in the stands. Johnny Edwards gave Chase the ball back in the seat. Great big crowd here today out in center field. Bleacher Rides enjoying the sunshine. And a good ball game. Four to three in National League. Yeah. Now zone hanging in there. Culp has the sign. He's in the wind up. Here it comes. Ball is small and hit high to right field. Aaron shading his eyes down with the glasses. Makes the catch two out. Two out on the fifth. That'll bring on Leon Wagner. Wagner singled in the second inning and scored a run. First run of of the American League. Grounded out to the first baseman of the pitcher covering in the third. A left-hand hitter. Wagner of the Los Angeles Angels. The halo on his hat. In the windup now goes Kulp. And the pitch on the way to the plate's a slow curve, but it's high. 320 feet down the line. Wagner is a right center field hitter. Can pull the ball right down the line on occasions. In fact, Aaron is playing him over pretty well to the line. Here's the pitch. Bit high. 2-0 the count now with two gone on the fifth. Wagner the hitter. And the score 4-3 to in National League leading. Here's Cubs' next pitch. Wagner swings on it and fouls it back here. Back of the plate. End of the netting. Bouncing back down on the field. And the count is now 2-1. and one. The pitcher looks around the outfield. Willie Mays playing Wagner straight away and carrying on a conversation with somebody. Willie loves to play baseball. Here's the next pitch. Swung on a line to right field. A base hit. A bullet hit out there. Wagner makes the turn and hangs on as Aaron comes up with the ball. That's nine hits now for the American League and brings on a pinch hitter for Earl Batty. Like Carl Yastrzemski, the left-hand hitter with the Boston Red Sox. Batting for Batty from the Boston Red Sox. Carl Yastrzemski. 
I've been told a personal student of Ted Williams. Williams could see greatness in the batting eye of this young man. Runner at first, Yastrzemski at the plate. First one's in the dirt of ball. First time, too, that he has been in an all-star game, and there must be a butterfly or two. It's a great game, a traditional game. Brings all the great stars together. Here's Culp in the stretch now. The pitch, two out, a runner at first. Pitch on the way. A little bit low. Culp is a bit low here on this one. Score four to three. National League leading the American League. This is the 34th All-Star game. Infield around the right. Yastrzemski can hit the ball anywhere. Top any stretch. Here she comes. Curveball hit high in the air. Down the right field line. Bill White, the first baseman in foul territory, gives up now as Javier makes the catch just barely foul. Javier, the second baseman, got it in foul territory. Retires the side. Fifth inning. No runs. On one hit, no errors. The man left. Score now as we go to the top of the sixth here. National League four, American League three. Full-sized value is just the beginning when you invest in a new Chrysler. Every Chrysler built, from economical Newport to luxurious New Yorker, benefits from your Chrysler Motors Corporation dealer's certified car care plan. This plan protects your Chrysler, keeps it performing the way a Chrysler should for as long as you own it. Your car is serviced at reasonable intervals by skilled experts who know it outside in, inside out. These men are specialists, skilled Chrysler trained technicians. Believe me, they know what makes a Chrysler tick. And they know how to use the right tool at the right time for every job, from a minor repair like a faulty windshield washer to a major repair like an engine overhaul. Your Chrysler is in good hands when it's serviced the certified car care way, approved by the engineers who designed your Chrysler-built car. See your Chrysler dealer about the best new car investment in the business. While the changes are being made, let's pause 30 seconds for station identification. The Industrial Bank of Schenectady offers complete banking services for the individual and the businessman, as well as a willingness to talk over any financial problems you may have and to help in any way possible. Loans, checking accounts, savings accounts, safe deposit boxes, Christmas club... All these services and more besides are yours at Industrial Bank of Schenectady, the truly friendly bank for you. Get acquainted with Industrial Bank at 224 State Street or the Woodlawn Branch at 815 State Street. This is WGY Schenectady. We have several changes right now. Bob Allison is in right field. Carl Yastrzemski goes into left field. Albie Pearson stays in the ballgame in center field. Brooks Robinson is at third base. Catching Alston Howard of the Yankees. And Jim Bouton is the pitcher. And the first pitch on the way to Kenny Boyer. Ball one. Jim Bouton, the right-hander of the New York Yankees. Fires, and the ball is fouled off back of first base going up in the stands. So now we have Robinson, Versalas, Richardson, and Pepitone in the infield. Yastrzemski, Pearson, and Allison in the outfield. Elston Howard, the catcher. Jim Bouton, the pitcher. Big right-hander of the New York Yankees. In the windup he goes now. Pitch on the way. Swung on and missed on a breaking ball. And it's a ball and two strikes. Score in this ball game. Four to three, the National League leads. Good ball game. Both managers expressed a great desire to get everybody in. Of course, a little tough. Kenny Boyer at the plate. None for two. Hits this one high in the air. On the left side, the third baseman, Robinson, in foul territory, makes the catch. Boyer out on the pop fly. One gone on the sixth. And that'll bring on Dick Grote, the Cardinal shortstop. And I think one of the great things about the game of baseball, Grote, who was raised in the Pirate organization, tries desperately to beat the Pirates now as a Cardinal. He's a right-hand hitter. Facing the right-hand pitching of Jim Bouton of the Yankees. They play him short in the outfield. There's a call strike. Fastball in there.
Jim Bowden gets a sign now from Elston Howard. In the wind, if he goes, here's the pitch, and it's a changeup swung on a line foul down the left field line in the seats. Pull the string that time. We haven't seen too many changes. In fact, both pitching staffs, predominantly fastball and slider pitchers, and one of the real hummers in the American League, Juan Pizarro, is warming up in the bullpen. A wood is chick, cold 45s in the National League. There's a pitch outside. Now it's two balls and two strikes. He checked out a ball and two strikes on the board. One gone in the sixth. Bowden cranks up, delivers in a hurry. Overhand curveball, hit on the ground to the third baseman. Robinson has it, has to hurry the throw. Got him. One of the great glove men, Brooks Robinson. Oh, the league is full of fine third basemen, both leagues for that matter. Two out on the six, and here's Julian Javier. Javier, the second baseman of the St. Louis Cardinals, has struck out and popped out. They're scored four to three, National League leads. Out hit by five hits. Two gone in the sixth. Bowden gets a sign now from Elston Howard to pitch overhand curve foul off. Bowden coming right over the top. Johnny Edwards on deck. He's batting ninth in the order. Bowden set again. Two gone in the sixth inning. In the windup, Bowden. Pitch on the way to the plate. It's a fastball. Hit on the ground. Big hopper to the shortstop, Versalis. Quick throw in the dirt and picked up by Pepitone in time. Good play at first base. Sixth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Score now as we go to the last half of the sixth inning. National League 4, American League 3. Oh, but Charlie, there's Bob and Vivian. Hey, give you a lift. Charlie, a new Plymouth. How's it dry? That handles like a dream. Why, How's it's... the gas mileage, Charlie? Oh, it's really great. I get... Oh, but Charlie, there's Ed and Gloria. Give you a lift. Charlie, a new Plymouth Sport Fury. What makes it ride so smooth? Torsion Air Ride. It has an understanding... How's the power, Charlie? Oh, it goes like a... I like those bucket seats. Well, I myself... Charlie, how uh, about the five-year 50,000-mile warranty? Huh? Oh, it's... Protect uh, against big repair bills, right? Yeah. yeah and, it, and that 550 warranty's on all Chrysler Corporation cars, right? How's the white flag? Tell us well, about the console. Does it come with a six shift? Okay, okay. Everybody out. If you have that many questions, see your Plymouth dealer. And stay tuned for warranty details later in the program. More changes being made, and while they are, let's pause 30 seconds for station identification. Paying your bills by check saves time and also gives you an unquestioned receipt for your payments as well. At Industrial Bankers Connected, you'll find checking accounts tailored to your needs. Low-cost checking accounts which help you be businesslike in handling your personal finances. So stop in. Find out how convenient a checking account can be at Industrial Bankers Connected, 224 State Street or the Woodlawn Branch with a drive-in window at 815 State Street. This is WGY Schenectady. Brand new pitcher, Hal Woodeschick of the Colt 45s, the left hander. And Woodeschick will be the fourth National League pitcher. It's been O'Toole, Jackson, Culp, and now Hal Woodeschick. Hal Woodeschick, batting in the sixth position. About ready to go now, last half of the. Go. Sixth inning, Joe Pepitone, the first baseman, has struck out on a line out. Struck out swinging in the second inning. So with Santo, Grote, Javier, and White in the infield, the catcher, Johnny Edwards. Outfield is Davis, Mays, Aaron Still. The left-hander, Hal Woodeschick, is ready to pitch the left-hand hitting Joe Pepitone. Scores four to three. National League leads. Runs and bunts, and he fouls it off on the first pitch. And the ball going down past Warren Child, president of the National League, sitting in a box right near the National League dugout, directly across the commissioner of baseball, along with the American League contingent, the home team here today. 
A strike to count on Pepitone. A wind-up by Woodshick. Side on them low. A ball and one strike now. Willie Mays playing uh, short center field. They play Pepitone straight away in the outfield. Around the right a little bit in the infield. The third baseman, Santo, in close. Here's the next pitch. A bit high. Two and one. Beautiful day. Gee, you couldn't want a better day for an all-star game. Colorful uniforms, beautiful ballpark, and fine plays. And a close one. Here's Woodishik's next pitch. And a swung all and missed on a curve ball, two and two. Left hand hitter, Pepitone. Two balls, two strikes. Woodishik cranks up and delivers. Foul tip, that is, into the glove of the catcher, Johnny Edwards. It's a strikeout. Pepitone actually checking his swing. The ball flicked his bat, went right into the glove of Johnny Edwards. And that'll bring on Soil over Salas. Salas, the little shortstop from the Minnesota Twins, a right hand hitter. Public relations man for the ball club in the winter, and gosh, that's hard to understand. <laughs> Unless a lot of people speak Spanish up there. Runs and bun and fouls it back. A strike. He can fly. Good fielder. And they kick his name around a little. Zorro, Zoilo, Zoilo. He likes Zoilo. One out on the six, and the score, four to three, National League leading. The wind up again by Wurschick. Pitch on the way is low inside. Fastball, one and one. Zorlo chokes up the bat a little bit. Crouches right over the plate. Here's Wudashik's next pitch, and it's a curve just missed outside. Two and one. Enfield talks it up. Fellas all know each other and respect the ability of their own teammates and those on the opposition here today. The wind-up now, the pitch on the way to the plate is low inside. Almost hit him on the foot. So now it's a three-ball, one-strike count on Zoyla Versalis, who looks down to the third-base coach. Johnny Pesky, whether the hit or the take, is on. In the wind-up he goes. Here it is. He was taking, and it's ball four. Versalis gets free transportation. That is the number one walk issued, I believe, by National League pitching. Now, here's the third baseman of Baltimore, Brooks Robinson, a right-hand hitter. Batting in the ninth position. Runner at first, one out. Infield shortened up, possible double play. Robinson takes a curve in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. Robinson, born in Little Rock, lives in Baltimore now. Big guy, 6'1", 190. Fine third baseman. Here's the stretch, the pitch on the way. Hit through the middle, across second base into center field. Versailles all the way to third. Mays coming up with the ball, does not throw. So you have there one of the great throwing arms in baseball being tested by one of the great runners in baseball as Versailles went into third base. And Mays had lost the battle because he had to come in and get the ball. So Versalos is at third. Robinson is at first, and here's Bobby Richardson, the Yankee second baseman, up for the first time in the ball game. Richardson has demonstrated over the years that he's a great hitter in the clutch. Witness his success in the World Series. National League four run, American League three. American League now has ten hits, national but four. Runners first and third and one out. Infield in. The pitch. There's a ground ball going to the shortstop. He has it over to second for one. Throw to first. Double play. So Richardson hits into a double play. Growth to Javier to White to end the inning. End the threat. The sixth inning produces no runs on one hit. There were no errors. And a man left. So at the end of the sixth inning, the score, National League 4, American League 3. Why is Valiant the best all-around compact anyone's come up with yet? 
Here are just a few reasons. A choice of two engines, the Pepe Economical Standard and the Hot Performing 225. Lasting value with rust-protected, rugged one-piece body. And your Plymouth Valiant dealer has low, low price tags right now. Remember, Valiant has the first and only five-year or 50,000-mile warranty. Yours only on cars from Chrysler Corporation. For more information on the warranty, stay tuned to the station. It's getting late. See your Plymouth Valiant dealer right now. Going down to the seventh inning, see what changes we have. We have a new pitcher coming on. That much we know. Juan Pizarro... Chicago White Sox. Pizarro, National League for a long time, has moved to the American League, and he's become a fine pitcher. He throws very hard. A left-hander with really a blazer. Smoke, as they call it in baseball. Luis Aparicio has gone in to play shortstop. Now pitching and batting in the fourth position from the Chicago White Sox, number 32, White now, Pizarro will be batting in the number four position. Now playing shortstop, batting in the eighth position. Hitting in eighth in place of Versailles will be Luis Aparicio. Luis Aparicio. And I suppose that fans who's followed the career of this young man over the years, well, the White Sox uh, were startled a little bit. And he went over to another ball club, Baltimore, but he's done a fine job. Quick hands, enjoys the game. Johnny Edwards now, coming on in the seventh inning. He's a left-hand hitter with the Cincinnati Reds. Johnny Edwards. Pizarro ready to throw the first one up there, and he does. It's a fastball over the outside corner. We've had now McBride, Bunning, Bowden, and Pizarro. There's a pitching staff right there, if you owned it. Next one on the way, slow curve that misses outside. Edwards a little anxious, almost went for that ball. Brooks Robinson, Luis Aparicio, Bobby Richardson, and Joe Pepitone in the infield. The Ostremski, Pearson, Allison in the outfield. Next pitch, ground ball hit down to the second baseman. Richardson up with it, tosses to first in time, one out. So Edwards out on a bouncer, Richardson to Pepitone, and that bring on Tommy Davis. Tommy Davis made a great throw in the ball game early. The flag a runner at the plate. He's a right-hand hitter. He's one for two in this one. He's grounded out, he's singled, and he's walked, and he scored a run. Pizarro gets the sign from Elston Howard. Into the windup he goes. Here it is. It's high and away, the fastball. Score four to three. National League leads the American. And we're in the seventh inning on a beautiful day. Pizarro cranks up. Slow curve, line foul down the left field line. So now it's a ball and a strike on the right-hand hitting Tommy Davis of the Dodgers. One ball, one strike. The wind-up, pitch to the plate. Slow curve, fouled off. Got him way on the front on the front foot that time. But Tommy Davis is strong. Sometimes off-balance can hit the ball a long, long way for you. Ball and two-strike count. One out on the seventh. Pizarro gets the sign from Elson Howard. Throws the ball. It's hit high into the air in the left center field. Albie Pearson calling for it. And he's got it. But Davis out on a very high fly ball to center field. Two gone now. And that brings on Henry Aaron. Aaron is grounded out. Aaron. Safe on a fielder's choice. Scored a run. I was out on a fly to center field. So now with two out on the seventh, the score four to three, National League leading. Pizarro, the left-hander, delivers. Slow curve, call strike. The slow curve from Pizarro is <laughs> kind of a favor. This boy, he can blaze. Here's Pizarro's next pitch. Slow curve again, call strike two. So now we have the battle of Pizarro with a known fastball and the ex-teammate of Henry Aaron... 
And then they're looking at two slow curves. They'll talk about that later. You can bet on it. 0-2 pitch. He fastballed them way outside. Just showed them that one. Gene Mott says, come on, Henry. Down at third base. He's coaching down there. Last year's National League Manager of the Year. The wind-up by Pizarro. Fastball a bit high. Oh, and he hummed that one. Two and two. Probably the fastest man we've seen here today. At least that pitch was thrown harder than any we've seen. Two balls and two strikes. Two out. In the seventh inning, and Pizarro delivers. Slow curve hit high to center field. Albie Pearson should get it. He's over there now, and he's got it, and the side's retired. So in the seventh inning, it's no runs, no hits, and no errors. And the score now is we'll go to the last half of the seventh. National League 4, American League 3. Whenever you buy a new automobile, there are two important points to consider. The car and the dealer who sells it. That's why so many people are beating a path to their Plymouth Valiant dealers. For Plymouth, on the move in 63, and on the move right now with the best buys of the year. For Valiant, best all-round compact anyone's come up with yet. And for certified car care, your Chrysler Motors Corporation dealer's health plan to prolong the life of your car. That's where the dealer comes in. His men are trained in certified car care techniques of servicing and maintenance. They have the right tools, specially engineered for Plymouth and Valiant cars. They have the right parts, factory-approved parts, to keep your car running like clockwork. And they have the certified car care plan itself, a program that gives you a written record of the care your car receives. So if you're in the market for a new automobile, think of the car and the man who will service it. Think about Plymouth, Valiant, and the dealer who gives you certified car care, yours only with cars by Chrysler Corporation. In this last half of the seventh inning now, we'll have Albie Pearson, Bob Allison, and the pitcher schedule. Albie has done all right here this afternoon. He's single and he has doubled. He scored a run and he struck out swinging. Little center fielder. Albie Pearson. Hal Woodishick, hole 45, left-hander. We'll do the pitching now to Albie in the last half of the seventh inning. American League trails by a run. They've had opportunities. Next pitch is a strike. Bell high with the outside corner as Albie bluffed a bunt. And that brought Ron Sato, the third baseman, up in a hurry. Ron right now rearranging some of the soil out there halfway towards the plate. A strike to count on Albie. Leans over the plate. Here's the pitch to him. And it's hit back to the glove of the pitcher, Woodishick. Threw him out of first base. Albie hit one on a one hopper back to Woodishick who tossed him out. Woodishick to White, one gone on the seventh, and that brings on Bob Allison. One of the strong hitters in baseball. Allison up for the first time. Bob Allison. Big right hand hitter of the Minnesota Twins. Right behind them, another twin, Harmon Killebrew. He'll hit next. As a strike. Born in Raytown, Missouri, lives in Minnesota now. Here's the pitch. There's a strike call on Allison. The killer, Killebrew, next. One gone, seventh inning. Score four to three. National League leads. Wodeshik in the windup. Here's his pitch. Allison takes it, bit inside. Allison is 6'4", weighs 220 pounds. Next pitch on the way. There's a long foul ball going down the left field line. That'll go into the lower deck. A ball and two strikes. Al Woodishick, a left-hander. One time pitcher with the Cleveland Ball Club. Score four to three, National League leading. Seventh inning. Here's the windup, the pitch. Allison swings and bounces it foul down past Sam Mealy, coaching at first. Well, Mealy, the twin manager, the hitter is Allison, the twin right fielder, and the on deck hitter, Killebrew, the left fielder for the twins. People in Minnesota proud of this power. One out on the seventh. 
Woodishick ready to pitch, and he does. And the ball is swung out and missed. He struck him out with a fastball. Allison, the big man out of there swinging. Now here comes Harmon Killebrew. Right hand hitter. And this fellow has got muscles on his muscles. He's big. Right now, it's four runs, four hits, and no errors for the National League. The American League, three runs, ten hits. They've committed one error. American League not capitalizing on their hits. What is it ready to pitch to the killer? And he does. It's outside a ball. Complimentary nickname for Harmon. He's called the killer. Most ball players have nicknames. One kind or other. Now Woodishick said again, here it is. Killebrew took it, it's a strike. Let her high over the outside corner. Good place for Harmon to hit the ball. Oh, he's in a hurry out there, Woodishick. Next pitch is a strike call. Woodishick nibbling on the corners now. And it's a ball and two strikes. Two out on the seventh inning. Woodishick already again. Here it is. Call strike three. Full on that time. So the seventh inning, no runs, no hits, and no errors, and nobody left. And the score now, the end of seven, National League four, American League three. What's the biggest thing about Dodge this year? The big, big Dodge 880. Here's a car for the big car man. The biggest, brawniest Dodge made. Big for easy handling, real comfort at the wheel and on the road. Big on power for sizzling performance when you need it. Big on styling with a look, a line that sets it apart from all other cars on the road. Big on value with torsion air ride, battery-saving alternator, rust-protected Dodge body. And, of course, big on dependability. First of all, because it's a Dodge, quality engineered by Chrysler Corporation. Second, because it carries the first and only five-year or 50,000-mile warranty in the business. Yours only on cars from Chrysler Corporation. For more information on the warranty, stay tuned to the station. Then see your Dodge dealer right now for one of the biggest buys on wheels and the best deal you ever made. The Big Dodge 880. Some more changes now as we get going in our ball game. It gives us one more chance to have a station ID. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. Whatever your banking needs may be, a checking account, a place to save, a loan for any worthwhile purpose, a safe deposit box for your valuable papers, well, you'll find that Industrial Bank of Schenectady is the complete and helpful bank for you. Why don't you stop in at Industrial Bank and get acquainted? You're always welcome. And you'll find Industrial is a truly friendly place. For all banking services, it's Industrial Bank of Schenectady at 224 State Street and the Woodlawn Branch with a drive-in window at 815 State Street. This is WGY Schenectady. Changes are just two of them. Tom Tresh of the Yankees will be in center field in place of Albie Pearson. And Dick Raddatz, a big right-hander of the Boston Red Sox, will do the pitching. He's just now starting his warm-up. Raddatz possesses a very low earned run average this year, appearing in 33 ball games. 1.42, pitching entirely in relief. And I guess, Bob, you'd have to say one of the game's outstanding and top relief pitchers. Indeed he is, uh, George. We saw him uh, recently in a couple of series, and uh, veterans like Joe Adcock said it was almost unbelievable the way this fellow with his tremendous size and freewheeling can really pump that ball in there. Bill White, Willie Mays, and a pinch hitter, no doubt, for the pitcher will come on here in the eighth inning. The score is 4-3. to three. The National League leads. And Raddatz, a big right hand, is ready. He weighs 235 pounds. Born in Detroit, lives in Royal Oak, Michigan. The first pitch is low, a ball. Nice, free, easy motion, but he can throw aspirin tablets at that plate. Bill White, the first baseman, a left-hand hitter, has not hit in three times at bat. Next one on the way. Call strike at the knees over the inside corner. Defensively, we have Brooks Robinson at third. Apricho 
is at shortstop. Bobby Richardson at second. Pepitone is still at first. Yastrzemski, Tresh, and Allison in the outfield. Here's Raddatz next pitch. Foul ball on a breaking ball this time. Side-armed into the left-hand hitting Bill White. As big as he is, that easy motion, long arms. He's rugged. Drysdale's in the bullpen now for the National League in left field. Here's the pitch. Missed outside. Now we go to two balls and two strikes here in the eighth inning on Bill White. The National League already leading by a score of four to three. White can hit the ball out of the park, but the outfield is playing him straight away because Raditz can fire. And a foul ball hit back a third upstairs. Cleveland Municipal Stadium. All be decked in bunning in honor of this great day in baseball, the All-Star Game. Two balls and two strikes. White at the plate. Close one. Four to three. Here's Raddatz pitching. Fouled off the screen back of the plate. And a slider, a breaking ball of some sort, got right in on the fists of the left-hand hitting White. Hit one of those right, I tell you. You get a handful of bees, a broken bat. Two and two. Here's Raddatz next pitch on the way. White swings on it and fouls this one off back a third. Hit the top of the ballpark and bounce back on the field. And then back again and almost caught, but not quite. And the fellow's leaning over the temporary fence down there, all the fans. It looks like a bunch of blocks when you set them up. You don't push the first one over as the ball rolled down. Now two balls, two strikes on White. Raddatz with a new one. Cranks up and delivers to the plate. Ball, hard hit, going to right field on the ground, a base hit. That's only the fifth hit and the first since the third inning for the National League. And a batter now will be Willie Mays. Well, Willie has done just about everything here today. He walked, he singled, he grounded out, he batted in two runs, he scored two, and he has stolen two bases. Mays, a right-hand hitter. The first pitch to Mays is swung on and fouled off, and Mays was going to try to hit that one in the lake. Oh, he took a pretty good rip. Next pitch to Mays is outside the ball. Willie Mays at the plate. Infield shortened up. Willie, a pretty tough man to double. He can run. A ball and a strike. The stretch by Raditz. Here it is. Fouled off. In fact, Willie went out a little from the plate that time. Took a little gamble on Raditz's fastball. Score four to three. We're in the top of the eighth inning, and the National League leads the American League. Bases on balls really have been a big difference in the game. Here's Raddatz next pitch. Runner going. Call strike. Throw to second. Not in time. Stolen base down there. Willie Mays is called out on strikes. You won't see that many times. Run and hit play that time. Bill White was running and Willie Mays is out on strikes. And that'll bring on Ron Santo. Ron Santo. Sano, the Chicago Cubs third baseman, a right-hand hitter with power. Willie McCovey has come out on deck. So now Raddatz has a runner at second base, Bill White. One man away. Top of the eighth. National League four, American League three. American League has ten hits, the National League five. It's a payoff on score. Raditz delivers. Swing and a miss. Boy, a blue darter thrown up there by Raditz. 
We have 44,160 here, and they've enjoyed a ball game, and it's still a good one. Aren't they all, really? Here's Raddatz pitching. There's a looper, broken bat job. Dying Quayle, base hit to right field. Quiet on the way to the plate, and he'll score. Now it's a 5-3 to three ball game. Ron Sandall hit a broken bat single to right field to drive home White with a fifth National League run, and that'll bring on a bench hitter for the pitcher, Willie McCovey. Willie McCovey, 6'4", 200-pounder, born in Mobile, Alabama, lives in San Francisco, left-hand hitter, and he can wrap them. Runner at first base now, and there's one out on the infield shortened up for the double play. McCovey at the plate. Swung on and missed. Took a big cut. There are many hard swingers in baseball. Well, this man is a hard swinger. Long arms. Long bat. And boy, he unloads. Here's the stretch now by Raddatz. Pitch is swung on and fouled off. He fooled him then. Had one hand off the bat. Five to three ball game. National leads. Raddatz in his stretch. He's a right-hander. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So McCovey, a pinch hitter, out on strikes. And the batter now will be Dick Grode. And Raddatz has either struck him out or given him a hit. Two hits, two strikeouts in this inning. Grote's a right-hand hitter. Went up to the plate three times, single once to bat in a run. Raddatz in his stretch. Runner at first leads. Here's the pitch. A strike call. Two gone. One strike to count on Dick Grote, the Cardinal shortstop. Up and ready is Raditz. Santo in his lead. Here's the pitch. Tries to hit it to right field. Fouled it off down the right field line. Grote, an expert at hitting the ball. Back of runners. you hear somebody caught that ball and fell down and tore up a $26 pair of slacks for a $3 baseball. They do it all the time. It's all right. Name of the game. Now we're ready with a new one. Here's the pitch to the plate, and it's a call strike. And Rattus struck out the side, but he did give up in the inning. One run on two hits. No errors, and a man left. The score at the end of seven and a half innings, National League 5, American League 3. The 1963 Dodge sales up 65%. Did you ever wonder why some cars sell better than others? Styling, performance? With the 1963 Dodge, it's both. When it comes to styling, the Dodge Dependables are in a class by themselves. And performance? Here are cars that won't take a backseat to any others in their class. And with certified car care, Chrysler Corporation's health plan to prolong the life of your car... Your Dodge dealer aims to keep the Dodge Dependables dependable. His men are specially trained to service and maintain every car in the full Dodge line. At their fingertips, they have Dodge-designed tools specially engineered for Dodge cars. They have factory-approved brand-new parts to keep your car in condition, plus the certified car care plan itself, a program that gives you a written record of the care your car receives. Dodge Styling, Dodge Performance, your Dodge dealer's certified car care plan, and the best deals ever offered. Just a few of the reasons why in 63, Dodge sales are 65% ahead. For the National League. Another change now. Now pitching for the National League. And the Dodgers, Don Drysdale. Side wheel and right-hander. Drysdale was 6'6". Throw the ball hard. 
Great fastball. Good curve and slider. Elson Howard will be the first man to face him in the eighth. The American League now has this chance and one more. The kind of a quick recap at the moment, the difference really is the base on ball issued by American League pitchers. One of them in the second inning scored. One in the fifth inning scored. It's all a part of the game, like the error, the base hit, pop fly, whatever. Elson Howard comes on to hit against Drysdale. And this has happened before in the World Series. They look back and create the great moments. Both these men have had them. Big winner last year, Don Drysdale, winner of the Cy Young Award. Here's his first pitch. It's a fastball strike in there. Those of you who get a chance to see the American League and not the National League, Pizarro, a left-hander, same kind of a fastball as Drysdale has, a right-hander. Swing and a miss, and he threw a breaking ball from strike two. Elston Howard up there in place of Leon Wagner. Drysdale into that windup. Here she comes. Missed outside a ball. Drysdale gives a little flick of the wrist as he turns the ball loose. It's 5-3, to three, the National League leading the American League. In the last half of the eighth inning in Cleveland, beautiful and big municipal stadium. Drysdale set again. Here it is. Foul ball back to the screen behind the plate. Hank Sower, the umpire working back there. Big Bill Zitkowski of the National League at first. Al Smith of the American League at second. Paul Pryor, third. Extra umpires. Harvey is in right field. Haller down the left field line. The pitch gets by, but it's too low. Now it's two and two. Sandy Koufax is now in the bullpen for the National League. Two and two of the count. First, struck him out. Drysdale's first man is struck out. And that, of course, is Drysdale's long suit. And the battle now will be Yastrzemski. Looking at the line score right now, National League has five runs on six hits and no errors. The American League, three runs on ten hits and one error. Kyle Yastrzemski, a left-hand hitter of the Boston Red Sox up now. Don Drysdale, all set, one gone in the eighth. Pitches a strike right in there. Yastrzemski took it. The third baseman Sato up even with a bag. Yastrzemski can hit to all fields, and the outfield plays him almost straight away. Here's Drysdale's next pitch, and it's a bit low. One and one. Great and classic game, the All Star game. Drysdale gets a sign from Johnny Edwards. Cranks up and fires, and the ball is fouled off in the upper deck. Back of the plate. Joe Papatone of the Yankees, gone all the way at first base, is on deck. One ball, two strikes. Drysdale gets the good sign now, and... Rears back and fires a fastball by him. Struck him out. Yastrzemski took a good cut and was down swinging. So now we've had occasion to have Woodishick strike out two men, the last two men in the seventh, and the first two men in the eighth. And here is Pepitone. Now the booing you hear, this is a Cleveland group of fans. Pepitone of the Yankees. Here's a pitch. Inside a ball. A booing or not, this young gentleman has done quite a job for the Yankees. Here's Drysdale in a hurry now. The next pitch. Swung on a long drive. Center field. Willie Mays on the run. Not patting the glove. But at the wall, he runs into the fence and got it. And I believe Willie hurt himself out there. The ball hit to the 380-foot mark. He's limping coming in. That'll retire the side. Good catch by Willie. Very deep. No runs, no hits, and no errors. 
At the end of the eighth inning, the score, National League 5 and the American League 3. Mother, a letter from Bob. Listen, dear Ruth, your authorized Chrysler Motor Corporation dealer's warranty against defects in material and workmanship on 1963 cars has been expanded to include parts replacement or repair without charge for required parts or labor for five years of 50,000 miles, whichever comes first. On the engine block head and internal parts transmission case and internal parts excluding manual clutch, torque converter, drive shaft, universal joints, excluding dust covers, rear axle and differential, and rear wheel bearings provided the vehicle has been serviced at reasonable intervals according to the Chrysler Motors Corporation certified car care schedule. Trucks are included but are subject to additional limitations of 1,500 hours operation if mileage does not accurately reflect the extent of actual use and operation of parts covered by the warranty. Coverage will not apply to trucks subjected to prolonged power takeoff or off-highway use. Thinking of you always, Bob. Dear, are you sure you're doing the right thing marrying a car dealer? In the ninth inning... It'll be Julio Javier and Johnny Edwards, the eighth and the ninth hitters. And then Tommy Davis, scheduled at any rate. But at the plate right now is Javier, the second baseman of the Cardinals, a right-hand hitter. And Dick Raddatz, the big right-hander, delivers to him. And the first one swung on and fouled off into the screen back of the plate. Scores 5-3, to three, the National League leads. And we're in the top of the ninth. American League has one more pop at them. Colfax still busy in the National League bullpen. Raditz gets the sign from Elston Howard. Pitches. Javier takes that one outside, and it's one and one. Ninth inning in Cleveland. Bright sunshine. The National League on top by a pair. Here's the pitch. Swung out and missed on a breaking ball. One ball and two strikes. Javier fooled on that one. National League uh, went fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh innings without a base hit. Next pitch is swung on and fouled off. National Leaguers got a run in the first inning on one hit. On the second inning, rather, one run on one hit. Two bases on balls in there. Two runs in the third, one in the fifth, and one in the eighth. Raddatz' next pitch, a bit high. Now it's two balls and two strikes. American League got a run in the second. They got two in the third, and that's all. Two balls and two strikes. As the big right-hander Raddatz pitches, swung on and missed, he struck him out. Javier out on strikes. And that'll bring on Johnny Edwards. And Raditz going to have many strikeouts here until this inning, and he has four of them, or until this part of the game that he's been in. They get five now. Edwards up now. He went up one time and grounded out. Waiting now for Alberto Clemente to go Clemente to go into the bullpen and left field. He has to run in playing area. They wait for him. Probably go in in place of Mays. Hopefully he wasn't hurt badly. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And it's one strike. White side walls. Duke Snyder on deck. Here's the pitch by Raditz. High fly ball, left side. Aparicio going back for it. Yastrzemski coming over, the left fielder. He's there, and he's got it. And any of three could have taken it. Two gone now. And Duke Snyder will be hitting for Tommy Davis. Your attention, ladies. for Davis. On the New York Mets. Duke Snyder wearing the uniform much the same color that he wore in Brooklyn, the same number four, and the same color that he wore in Los Angeles. But now it's the New York Mets, and Duke Snyder comes on with two gone on the night. National League leading. Here's a ground ball hit hard down the right field line. Foul. Snyder always a threat. He walks up swinging. Swinging. 
Scores 5-3. to three. The National League leading in this ball game in the top of the ninth inning. Here's Raditz ready again. The curve ball in for a call strike. Snyder has a couple of words to say to Hank Sower. I'm sure not about the pitch, just where was it, probably. Next pitch on the way, outside. Raditz is one and two on Duke Snyder, a left-hand hitter. Probably the best performance of the day has been turned in thus far by Raditz. And he does that almost every day. Here's the pitch. Call strike over the outside corner. Snyder is out. In the ninth inning, it's no runs, no hits, and no errors. So at the end of eight and a half, the score, National League 5, American League 3. known as the success car of the year. It's the 1963 Dodge Dart. Big on room, yet small in price. A compact, but with enough wide open spaces for family enjoyment. Big car power, but with real gas economy. And with all the engineering features that have made Dodge mean dependable. All this plus the first and only five-year or 50,000-mile warranty you heard about earlier. Yours only on cars from Chrysler Corporation. For a look at the success car of the year and for the best deal you ever made, see Dart at your Dodge dealers. Some changes now. Roberto Clemente goes into the ball game into center field. And Duke Snyder stays in the game and goes into left field. Luis Aparicio will be the hitter in the last half of the ninth inning. From the New York Mets. Four, the Abricho, Robinson, and Bobby Richardson schedule. Now the score is 5 to 3. And we're in the last half of the ninth inning. Announcement being made about the changes. Kofax. One bullpen, Mambo on the other. Here's the first pitch to Abricho. It's high, a ball. Luis, a little guy, great shortstop, a right hand hitter. Always a bunt threat, and Sato's up close. Needing a couple of runs, he might do anything. There's a high fly ball into short right field. Second baseman Javier back, and he has it. Now, Breachu out on a pop fly ball. Brooks Robinson comes on now. Juan Marichal is now in the National League bullpen. Five runs on five hits, no errors. They get five runs on six hits, no errors for the National League. Three, ten, and one for the American League. Next pitch, swung on and missed on a sidearm curve by Drysdale. Ball game action packed early and good pitching now. One out of the ninth, last chance. The pitch, swung on the line, center field base hit. So Brooks Robinson singles to center field. Clemente fires back in towards second. And now Bobby Richardson represents the tying run here in the last half of the ninth inning. Richardson, a right-hand hitter, and uh, giving the giving him a little bit of a shot here right now too. Get into a double play in the sixth inning. He's a right-hand batter, runner at first. He's the tying run. There's one out. Infield shortened for the possible double play. Call strike over the outside corner. Drysdale fired that one. We're in the last half of the ninth. Big Don Drysdale in his stretch. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled into the glove of the catcher. And it's nothing in two. Richardson at the plate. Tommy Trash with the Yankees on deck. Drysdale gets that sign once again from John Edwards. In the stretch he goes. Looks over to first and steps off. Brooks Robinson's run, not an important run, with a score 5-3. to three. They want to hold him just the same with the one out. Now Drysdale's up there. Here's the pitch. A little bit low and off the shin guard of the catcher, Johnny Edwards, bounced out in front. He went out and got it. Robinson had to hang on down at first base. We 
Richardson from Sumter, South Carolina. Here's Drysdale's pitch. And it's a ground ball. Throw it out a second for one. Might be a game-ending double play. It is. White fired to Groot. Groot back to first base. And Richardson hit into two double plays. And this one ended the ball game. In the ninth inning, no runs. On one hit, though, no errors. And nobody left. And a final score in the All-Star game. National League 5, the American League 3. You're more familiar, I'm pretty sure, Bob, with what's going to go on. What is it? Thanks to the All-Star Game. Unusual endings, uh, certainly of any spectacular ball game in which a great little second baseman who in some other great uh, classics has been uh, honored as the most valuable player who hit in the two double plays today. The National League, five runs on six hits and no errors. The American League, three runs on 11 hits and one error. So the bonded power of the National League did not show itself. The pitchers of the American League were hold, uh, able to hold the National League to only six hits but were not able to score the runs. The American League left seven runners stranded on the bases, and a fine play by Tommy Davis in the first inning sort of set the theme for the whole affair when he threw to the plate to get Nally Fox trying to score from third on a fly ball hit deep in the left field by Al Kaline. A wonderful, spectacular performance by a great number of uh, pitchers. Dick Raditz, the uh, fireballer from the Boston Red Sox, who struck out five of the eight men he faced, the uh, National League's Don Drysdale, who came on in the 8th and ninth innings and took care of the American League, although he surrendered a hit, getting Bobby Richardson to bounce into a double play. Interesting to note that Ralph Hawk used uh, practically everybody on his staff, with the exception of two players, Norm Siebert and Don Leppard, and in the pitching department, uh, used all of his pitches, with the exception of Bill Mondelkett and uh, Jim Grant. The National League... He utilized uh, most of their players, with the exception of Orlando Cepeda of San Francisco, Joe Torrey of Milwaukee, and Maury Wells of Los Angeles, so they used all but three of their outfielder, infielder, catcher department. In the pitching department, they used all but Warren Spawn and Juan Marischal and Sandy Koufax, although Marischal was working in the bullpen along with Koufax at the end of the game. So the fans who came to see got a chance to see the All-Stars. Warren Spawn, they had a chance to see him before the game. They got an opportunity to see Stan the Man Musial, Duke Snyder, Willie Mays. Mays making one of the fine catches of the game against the fence. Giving every inch of their great talents in the performance that enabled the 44,000 fans who paid their way here today on the banks of Lake Erie to watch indeed a game that typifies the great desire of the men of professional baseball to utilize their abilities. It certainly is a great lesson to the young uh, fellows of playing baseball around the country that here indeed on this time and this afternoon were men who proved that if you have the talents and are willing to work at it, you can uh, realize the ambition of your lifetime. I'd have to say, uh, George Bryson, that every uh, young man who played in this diamond today uh, took a great sense of pride in his performance and in his appearance. You're absolutely right. Uh, it's probably the greatest honor that can uh, befall a major league ball player now. And uh, at the beginning, perhaps it wasn't exactly that way. But suddenly now there's come the feeling in the past few years that this is a great showcase for the national pastime. And youngsters can't help but look at the men out there, no matter who they are, where they come from, if they're in this all-star game, they represent a slice of the pie of America and, uh, and the best game of all. So, wherever you are, youngsters, if you have this talent to play ball, play all you can. And the same thing I might pass on to the fans. If there's a ball game in your neighborhood, be it semi-pro, professional, major league, whatever it is, it's a wonderful place to spend a summer evening or a summer afternoon in a ballpark. Well, now the margin uh, closes down. The American League has won 17 games. The National League has won 16. There's been one tie. And here uh, today in Cleveland, Ohio, the uh, best of the National and of the American League have been here. George, it's been a wonderful day. It certainly has. Especially for yours truly coming in here. And uh, although we didn't get to see the ball 
player representing the club I'm with, Kansas City, play. That, too, is something that should be touched on. Managers want to win this ball game. They like to get everybody in, but in most cases, it's not at all possible. No, indeed. They uh, tried to play the game. They tried to give them all a chance to play, and that's the story of the All-Star Game of 1963. National League 5, the American League 3. This program is authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the Commissioner. That wraps up the 1963 All-Star Baseball game. The final score again, National League 5, the American League 3. Our engineer has been Claire Taylor, our producer, Len Dillon. Be with us in October for the 1963 World Series when your hosts, as for this All-Star game, again will be Chrysler Corporation with the first and only five-year or 50,000-mile warranty and the Gillette Safety Racer Company, world leader in shaving. This is Bob Neal along with George Bryson saying thanks for being with us. This has been a sports production of NBC News.